Hello everybody and welcome along to what can only be described as a nice sunny day here in Belgium. Welcome to the 12 hours of Spa Frankel Champs. I am Mr. Evil Dragon 99 slash XXL because I'm on my own channel. It gets confusing. Joining me is my good old friend Rotary. Hello Rotary. Hello Liam. We're here for the awesome WTCR, uh, well, WTRC, sorry, 12 hours of Spa. We're at the halfway mark, stints one and two have been completed and now we're into the halfway mark, Evil. We've been tagging along on the stream, it's been pretty interesting, hasn't it? It most certainly has, we've had a lot of, uh, up to a lot of drama. Of course, in stint one, Calibur, who of course is AXR Liam's teammate and the simply lovely Mercedes, by the way, and it's nice purple white uh, Aquapack livery. They disconnected in stint one, so Liam has had to pull off the miracle to try and get back in it. Now, from our understanding, and we'll be confirmed this, I believe they are currently in sixth or seventh. Yeah, I believe so. Obviously, we're still waiting for some of the like stints and standings to come through. Obviously, because the stewards are going to do this after the stints are finished. But um, yeah, that disconnect, that was a real big toll that it was it's really the story of the whole event you know the car has been fast or we've i mean just to just to start with caliber was even meant to be driving you know it was meant to be i think i'm not quite sure who in the lineup it was but it had some sort of technical issue late last night and caliber was drafted in at the last second and he wasn't exactly happy with the way the mercedes was feeling so he's had a couple of hours now to get the car suited to the way he was and he made a bold statement saying he could find a lot of time and go to fa and go a lot faster than he was in stint one so we'll see if that comes to fruition in this third stint here but it, it's been drama throughout the event and well that's usually how it goes in endurance racing there's usually drama up and down the field but it's a tight battle at the front it's tight battles everywhere really so hopefully it's going to be another three hours of the same lovely endurance action most certainly. Well, so I get my first look properly at the liveries, by the way, and I, I must say, everyone has done a superb job with the liveries they are all running. I absolutely adore them. Uh, I like the uh, Corvette, the number 89. That's a uh, very, kind of, it's got very toyota -y vibes, uh, or, well, I suppose IMSA vibes, I think, as well. It's beautiful, of course. Further down the field, we have got Dodo, of course, in the sister car as well the number one so down we've got the first of two axr teams we've got the corvette and the mercedes of course the c is c7 ethan isn't it yeah the corvette c7 uh fictional version of the uh c7 gt well it was a gt3 car run by callaway and also obviously the factory corvette uh, c7 gte obviously now corvette running the c8 GTE, well, GTD Pro, G3 Pro, because obviously GTE's um, come to the end of its life cycle now. But hope maybe we might see the C8 in uh, Gran Turismo 7, but yeah, the uh, C7, uh, C7R, call that. Indeed. Meanwhile, Porsche 911, of course, the 20, I'm going to say 2017 one. Uh, I mean, they're all pretty much, uh, they get confusing very quickly because they all look the same. Uh, this one, it's in a Pescarola-esque livery. It's green and blue, and uh, green and blue just brings back good memories uh, around here. I mean, there's a Jordan 191, which is green and blue. That's that's popular. Um, that that that's very famous around here for some reason. I, I don't know why, Ethan. Yeah, I, mean, I gotta say, the WEC fans forum guys, I gotta say they do look awesome, and we gotta be right there. A Pescarola vibes. Same with the, uh, what was it, the, uh, there was a Formula E team with some press. Yeah. It's just blue and green cars, they just look so good, and the Porsche and the Jaguar looking fine indeed. Obviously that Porsche was involved in some, was uh, on the screen for for the wrong reasons last year, getting caught up with one of the AXR cars, I'm not quite sure which car it was, I think it was one of the Corvettes, I think, well, a Corvette, only but in one Corvette. So it had been an uh, AXR Groot then, uh, had a bit of an incident, but, uh, Nonetheless, that's what happens in uh, endurance racing. You can get a little close moment. Right now, look as we watch uh, Simeo go through the exit of Le Confin. That's Malmedy, actually, down into Brussels. Uh, 
has the lobby seems to be ready up, so I think we should be getting on the way just in a few moments' time, Ethan. Yeah, and obviously, so they're just waiting. Well, it's obviously Stint 2 done. They're going to take the results of that. Cars will be plonked in the order, I presume, plonked on order based on. Well, here we go, we're going now. So, from my understanding, we should see the front runners starting at the front. It'll be a full, well, it'll be a rot in game rolling start, and then they'll get going. Obviously, waiting to see what. hours of driving Let's see if caliber can make up for the time that was lost in stint one liam did a good job trying to claw of it some claw of it, some of it back caliber starting fifth on the road so he hasn't got many cars in the way but the cars in front of him are all so fast and kiwi uh kwe dodo formerly known as evo tropic i believe last time he was a winner here he is insanely quick in that corvette so caliber's got some work to do here but here we go we've all three hours of racing coming our way yeah and here we are then one by one coming through the last corner the third stint beginning towards the well we are in the middle and we are officially underway then for stint number three in mountain kent gets a pretty decent start right we say as we uh, all shuffle our way through down into turn number one so it's Mountain King leading away from Randy. Behind them, Sonan and then Dodo. Behind, of course, both of the AXR drivers of Calibre Splash. Followed by Donardi Groot starting to already close up onto the back of that. And we saw in Stint 2 a huge gaggle of cars around this pack having a stonking battle. Will we see that yet again this afternoon as we already start up the El Rouge and in towards Radion? And we know how quick that Porsche is, but the BMW uh, behind, pretty quick as well. Yeah, the BMW it is a good car. It's a good all-rounder, but there's a lot of powerful cars here. You've got the Corvettes, the Jags, the Astons, the Mercedes as well. So the BMW and the Porsche are going to be a bit some outsiders here. But they are, I'd say, the safer options. The, the Corvette, the Jag and the Aston, they're going to go through their fuel really really quick and obviously it seems like the fuel is accelerated a bit the fuel seems to run out very quickly so it seems to be some teams are going for half an hour stints and then switch it uh, put some more fuel in and tires so we'll see how it all plays out where's caliber he's fifth all by him lonesome so this is the issue with spa in his formation in game formation that their cars start so far apart there's just no battles right off the bat but I suppose that could be a blessing in disguise because that means there's no massive incidents immediately from the get-go on, you know, like lap one, turn one. So it gives the guys some time just to get into a rhythm before battling. So Caliber's holding station for now, but like I said, we're, you know, he was doing like, what, 214s? Low 214s, I remember. I think his fastest was 214.0. So if he's going... A second or more faster than that, he's on good course to claw him back a lot of that time from the disconnection. Yeah, that's going to be the interesting thing. Already you can see potential movers. Here is THG Mike trying to figure out around the outsider so far. A little bit early to make a move risky. But, uh, of course, we know, Ethan, from what we saw earlier on, very good just to be able to slipstream up El Rouge. Oh, they on the inside goes Kevin. And while he takes two positions in the space of, well... Not even a corner on a braking zone. So, well, that, I was about to say to be patient. Well, never mind. Some people are uh, going for it. And that was a simply sensational little dive up the inside. We'll have a little look at it in a moment. Because I should have the replays up and working. It's now the BMW. You might, you might want to turn your attention to the front running. The Corvette and the Aston goes side by side through a rouge. The Aston's low, isn't it? Oh, how is he safe that? Wow. Some amazing car control there from Randy Moore from the GTSV crew that was an insane save there side by side for a rouge on lap two i mean that's 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 daring but they're looking to make the time because they are i'm pretty sure the leading car and they've got they're in a corvette sandwich here the corvette ahead i don't think he's racing them for position it's the corvette behind that is and i'm pretty sure after stint one it was like 31 seconds ahead i don't know where it is now but randy moore's gonna be looking to make some time up but he's got a Corvette that's helping the Corvette behind so there's gonna be some team play here how quickly can Randy Moore get past him and I think he's eager to get past because he's sizing up a move into Poo one you're not gonna do it there not a chance yeah front cut off straight away of course wants to be careful not to get the rear out too much but he could get a little opportunity around the outside here down into the Fania chicane 
or piff paff as it sometimes is called as that Corvette squiggling around on the brakes just managed to hold the line though and it's going to be an interesting thing here Ethan is how aggressive and how much attack do you want to throw in on the first couple of minutes of a three hour stint when as we almost saw from Randy he got to drop that very easily and one straight into the wall he's going to attack around the outside into Blontimont so Randy is going to be on the attack then outside line Corvette has a knot of grunt in a straight line as well. Let's see. They're both a bump draft each other. And he's getting squeezed slightly out wide. And now, guess what? Both the Corvettes are through then. Into second and third position. And now, I believe, switching positions as well. And let's see. That's going to be around the outside. And this is turning into a great swim. Now, the inside will be for the first corner. We'll now go to Mountain King. Randy Mott will have to try and hold around to the outside. And these two have been side by side now for nearly half a lap. In terms of rating, still going at it. Long way around the outside. It'll be getting a slightly shorter run. Don't want to be careful. It doesn't get squeezed too much yet. And let's just see the Corvette. Very quick in a straight line. It'll be brave to he's hold the nose here. No, he's, back out. he's lifted off. And Dodo is just running away now. I mean, that is some immaculate team play there from Mountain King. He just left Randy Moore. Oh, look at that. Sonam trying to... Fred the Iron Needle were free wide down the camel straight. It's all going wrong for the GTS V Aston. And here comes Caliber. He's trying to thread the Iron Needle. You're not going to go there. Oh, a bit of contact. It's all getting hairy now. And the Aston Martin is just being swamped around the outside by Caliber. It's just going from bad to worse. They've gone from being side by side for the lead of this stint and out of Rouge. And now a lap later, they have just been swamped by every car possible and Splash is going to be sniffing there now and he's going to be looking to make a move around the outside at No Name well Jackie X certainly can do it there Mountain King caught at the bollard and here comes Splash to try and pick up the pieces into the inside of Pool 1 uh, Mountain King wisely backs up and Sonam I mean I've got to say Sonam and Caliber two big winners out of that but Eva, well, Dodo formerly known as Eva Tropic he's checked out 2.1 seconds up the road and I think it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger from here on onwards. Yeah, great little scrap there between those two. The team play out the forefront. But you got to say, Caliber really gaining time is Splash getting into the side of uh, King Lat. And these two getting a little bit close in comfort there. They got very close into Poo and they slightly tapped. But uh, let's see, Splash will have the work around the outside. No different engine. It's all about pure exit speed. And now it's all about who's got the bigger... Uh, Reverbial uh, thing, and they do touch again through there in a flash of the light. As up in second and third position, Caliber now up to second. He is on an absolute charge through the field from fifth to fourth to third to second, and now he'll be going chasing after the race leader. And let's see, yeah. look, both Mercedes now together, second and third. And what a start, you might say, from Caliber, and he has taken the initiative. Yeah, he certainly has. I mean, he said he wasn't happy, and he's obviously, like I said, spent that time with the Mercedes. Obviously, he wasn't probably not happy with the way it's been set up. Obviously, I have no idea how the Mercedes has been set up. Looking at it, it looks like it's got some rake there. What's Sonam going to do? He's got a good run. He's waiting, and Caliber, he's defending the inside. Caliber's going to want to ditch this THG Merc as fast as possible because it's just going to cost him time. He's a la couple laps down. He breaks later. Wow, he's very good on the brakes there. Lots of confidence there. Sonam just had no nothing to answer for it. Randy Moore's going to be looking to make up the time and Splash has obviously got past, past Mountain King now. Well, yeah, just, like I said, taking the initiative and let the other people do the work for you. And he just slipped on by... And now he's got a clean track ahead of him. He just needs to ditch the Mercedes behind him and just try and keep his nose clean and not get caught up in any incidents. So just do the laps he needs to do. Indeed. Well, up front so far, Dodo leads this uh, afternoon's race. I believe he is the outright leader currently. We'll uh, get confirmation in due course. Now from Calibre in second in this stint. Third position from Sonam in a... Pretty nice helmet, by the way, of the uh, blue and the white of the uh, little circle on the top. I just noticing it through the uh, screen there. Is behind him, Randy Moore now starting to close up. And then it is a three-second gap down to Splash Mountain King. Denardi battling away heavily with 
Kevin. These two were uh, inseparable, it seemed, in uh, stint number one. Mike slightly further behind. And then, of course, two seconds back, Groot. And it looks like Simeo has had a issue somewhere because he is 16 seconds. But, of course, trundling on and he will carry on his merry way. Up front, though, now look at these three together again, Ethan. Calibut, Sonab, and Randy Moore now starting to close back into this after that start. Now he's dispatched of King. He's going to get back on it. Yeah, and obviously Caliber is towing along the Mercedes and the Aston Martin, the howling V12. God, I do miss this engine. It will... Well, I mean, to be fair, actually, I mean, it depends on what setup they're running. I mean, it's a bit hard to tell. I'm trying to look from the side angle. Yeah, it's got quite a bit of rake on. So it's going to be a little bit slower in a straight line, but nose to, well, not quite nose to tell through Erujan Radion. But here we go. Caliber, he goes narrow. He's trying to, look at the, the pace the THG Mercedes has got. He's rocketing up to the back of him. Is he going to be brave enough to hang it around the outside? No. Caliber stomps on the brakes as, dare, as late as he dares. And he makes it work, and now Randy Moore's going to be right onto the back of him now, but he's got to pick and choose wisely here. He can't afford to make a move that he's going to later regret and pick up a penalty for it. Well, he, I don't think he's going to need to worry too much. So, Nam deciding to do a bit of Tokyo Drift into the Brussel hairpin. Don't want to be doing that. Yeah, he's getting the power on there, just sliding the brakes. It's so easy to do where brake bias, of course. It's a, that corner, downhill braking. It's... it's, it's it, you could say, Ethan, it's definitely harder than it looks, as I as I struggle to get words out. Yeah, I mean, it's far. It's I mean, people some people think it's an easy circuit. It's not as challenging as per se the Nurburgring or Bathurst, but you know, punishment is waiting for you in most areas. And you know, there's plenty of gravel traps, there's plenty of asteroid turf, there's plenty of curbs and bollards waiting to punish you for your mistakes. Thankfully, not many people have made a mistake. Oh, Randy Moore! Oh, there's not a move there. There was just not a move. You got, like I said, pick and choose wisely. That was not choosing wisely. That was choosing as quickly as possible and being a little bit impatient. We got two hours and 48 minutes. There's no need to. It's exactly. And then he goes for the move at blunt at the bus stop. So there was no need to be nosing his way up the inside when an overtaking opportunity was coming that early. So, well, he's dispatched to the Mercedes now. The Mercedes is obviously still going to have to slip. I have a feeling Solan wouldn't be too impressed with the contact that was made, because that very easily could have pitched the Mercedes into a tank slapper and would have been into the barrier. But, yeah, thankfully, Spa's not too punishing, but... Uh, unlike some other games like iRacing or ACC, but I mean, we nearly saw Randy Moore nearly fly off out of Richard Radio when he was trying to go around the outside of one of the Give Corvettes. Him Look at this, giving the uh, thing. He's flashed the line slot. He'd probably say thank you for the little tap. The bum drafting down the straight here is so now, but he's going to back out of it, yeah? Potentially knows that Randy might be slightly quicker. You can see him struggling there with getting the front end turned in. Try and follow. Try and see if Caliber... And these start battling. Caliber, meanwhile, has got that gap to about 3.5 seconds right now to the race leader, who is slightly, if not, closing every now and then. So it's a long race. Three seconds is, well, nothing in a three-hour race. So no, we'll see what happens. Certainly not. Dare I say, maybe... Uh, maybe Caliber's not fully up to pace yet. Maybe he's just warming up. Uh, Randy Moore, oh well, yeah, he's absolutely dropped uh, Sonam, unless Sonam's made a mistake, splashes all by him, loads him in fifth there. I mean, probably that's probably what he prefers. I certainly prefer it being by myself. It means you can just not give two hoots Ooh, about whoever else is around. What has happened here? Mike, is that Groot or is that Denardi who's gone wide there? That's well, Denardi. it's Denardi going slightly wide. And I wonder, was there some ever so slight contact as these two continue to battle? A slight flash of the lights there. From Donardi. Let's have a little look, then, if we can. If I get an onboard that uh, lets me get the onboard. There we go. And let's have a little look, see what happened down here. We'll go and press the further back one. Let's see if we can get longest. So let's see. Donardi's going through here. Gets on the curb. And tank slapper there. 
And that is what has happened to that. And then, of course, Mike is presumably going to sliver on up the inside because no grip, dirty tyres. And yep, that is how that one happened. So, slight tank slapper. Though, isn't it? Yeah. Very lucky. Uh, it, and I'm just checking the chat for the chat box. One of the drivers is not impressed with the Jaguar of Denardi. Not impressed with some of the... Oh, I might need to just reread that. Reporting Denardi that THG Kevin has hit him three times so far. Well, I haven't seen any of that. Well, obviously, something's going on that we're not seeing. If you want to obviously contact, just want to keep it to a minimum, really. And Randy Moore, he is looking to try and dispatch a calibre here. And I think this might be Calibre's worst nightmare here, having a car that's capable of keeping with him and interrupting his efforts to try and claw back that time that's been so tragically lost by that disconnect. I mean, it, there's nothing worse than something out of your control just stripping away all of your progress. I mean, thankfully it only happened, well I say thankfully, maybe it's not thankfully for them, but, you know, fortunately happened in Stint 1 Evil, but how how much is Caliber going to be a little bit boiled from the unfortunate the the unfortunateness of Stint One? Is he going to hold on for dear life a second, or is he just going to let Randy Moore, if Randy Moore is faster, just go on by and just tag along? Well, as a wise man once said, it is a marathon, not a sprint. So let's see if. Uh... It is a marathon or a sprint. Well, let's see. Round the outside, down it in towards the famous Blanchimont corner. And, of course, Randy knows that Mercedes has a little more girth in a straight line than the uh, the equally powerful Aston Martin. But, of course, it's a V12 versus the V8, isn't it, the uh, Mercedes? Oh, V8. Yeah, yeah, V8. Uh, girth, I, I think you meant grunt. Oh, That's yeah, the well. one. Um Different terminology uh, there. De de um, I definitely say the Aston Martin is a little bit wider than the Mercedes, but yes, uh, V8 engine in the Mercedes. I'd rather say rather mounted midship. It's so low and so far back. It is effectively a mid-engine car. Is there any more accelerating on the curbs? There's little moments like that that just start peeling the tyres away. And once the tyres drop off, it's like driving on ice, and it's not a it's not a nice feeling, let's be honest. I mean, driving on board tires on GT Sport is like trying to drive a car with slicks in the way in the rain. And sometimes that is a horrible experience as well. But here we go, around the outside. I know, Caliber's holding on to it, and that's just gonna cost them both time. I'm quite surprised. It's quite I don't know if Caliber has the pace. Had their matching last lap from Caliber to 215 0 251 from Randy Moore, so they're quite equal on pace, and it's worst case scenario, for, I think, for both of them, because Randy Moore wants to get by, but Caliber wants to make time, but he's not going to let the car that's faster him through, it seems. Yeah, of course, the Mercedes definitely seems to be ever so slightly heavier on its tyres, and slightly worse on its fuel, so you start a wonder, Ethan, if Caliber, in the best interests of his race, is to try and let the Aston Martin through... Of course, re everyone's a racing driver here. They don't want to do that. But let's see. You don't want to end up tripping over each other because we've seen before how easy it can be when you battle just to make contact and then you're both off. And that is the end of that one. So, Mercedes, Aston Martin. The Aston in the slipstream behind them, the other M Mercedes. And again, the inside line will present itself. And now Finn Caliber now has... Surely going to have to back out of that move. It'll be brave around the outside. Does have to back out just in the end because there was not going to be a gap right there. And now, just follow. Keep with. And really, just try and pull yourself along. Save the tyres a little bit. Don't get the rear end out. And try and pull away because Randy Moore is extremely quick. But up front, who is going even quicker, is the Dodo. Who uh, is unfortunately not going on extinct, uh, unlike the real thing. Well, fortunately, he's not going on extinct, shall we say. Um, which is good to see. Third position, though. Now following the 
Aston Martin yet again. Reverse, reverse. Dead Sea, though. Is Caliber going to uh, do as what I theorise, or is he going to re overtake him? Or is he going no, to give he's him a bump draft? Bump draft bump drafting. And the Mercedes is eating its fuel. It's using it more than the other cars and his tyres. And I've got some insider knowledge from the AXR camp that Caliber's tried some tweaks on the setup and it doesn't seem to be working. Well, I mean, when, you, when you look at the times, it's definitely not working and he's not impressed, apparently. So. It's going to be another two hours and 41 minutes of having to deal with a car that is quite clearly not happy and a driver who is not happy with the car. Maybe fortunes may turn around later on, but you just got to deal with the hands you've been dealt. It's, you know, things happen in racing and just go from there. The best thing he can try and do is just, obviously, it's quite clear, Randy Moore, he's got the better pace. It's just wiser just to let him go, save some fuel, save the tyres, and just tag along as best as you can. Trying to battle is just going to use your tyres up more. It's going to use your fuel more. You're not going to gain anything out of it. You can see he's struggling to follow the Aston Martin already. Oh, yeah, I think it's just wise just to let the Aston Martin get clear and just tag along for the ride. Yeah, it definitely seems it could be that option, as I see, uh, I think we had our first stopper there, as uh, Simo has a, a second penalty. I believe Kevin has just came in the pit lane recently. Yes, he has. Yeah, he has. So, for our first stopper, there are over just under 20 minutes. So, that's, I don't think that should be a scheduled stop, re really, I Ethan. I think that might have been, yeah, lap he came in. Oh, it doesn't actually, lap 80 came in, and it was 3 minutes, 21 seconds. So I think there was some damage involved there as well. Yeah, that definitely seems potential, but like we said, Calibuck just hanging in there for the ride for the time being. We'll ride through the rest of the filming. Well, uh, so man, uh, sorry, Sonam in fourth ahead of SDM Splash in fifth. Mountain King, who's getting a little bit squiggly, dropping back a little bit right now towards the battle between Donardi, who is running away from the Mahivas of that BMW, which basically dwarfs the very, the very large, but in comparison, small Jaguar. Uh, behind them, we've got the Porsche of Groot, ahead of, of course, Simo and then Kevin down in a 11th position. Though, not too far away from Simo, as I'm wondering, has he got damage at all, or is he no. struggling slightly? His front tyres are just peeling. It might be worth having the telemetry on just to see what, see what's going on. Just get some more insider knowledge on what the cars are behaving like. And you can see they're quite, I mean, obviously not not quite happy with the drag. It seems. Uh, let's have a look through. Yeah, he's talking about the BMW M6. It is quite a large car, but incredibly quick, very successful as well. Obviously now being replaced by the BMW M4. Uh, polarizing uh, looks that car I think it looks absolutely awesome and it's uh, quite an awesome car to drive apparently in real life and in game on a set of Corsa fingers crossed in GT7 uh, just looking at the tires as well Splash is caught right up onto the back of Sonam Sonam seems to be struggling here Splash is nearly in the toe he was in it briefly you can see the Mercedes is pulled away in the middle sector the Mercedes like it is an all-round balanced car the corvette it's got that big old v8 traditional american well traditional american v8 motor all it's all the punch in the straight lines and cumbersome in the corners i mean i say that last time i saw a corvette going uh fast was an xr number in 24 hours and it was like the second fastest car around the nordschleifer so i mean it says what i know but one thing we do know is Splash, I think, eventually is going to be sizing up Sonam. And Splash, a very, very quick and intelligent driver, knows when to back out, knows when to make his move. His racecraft is up there with some of the best drivers that I know and race with. So I'm going to be looking forward to seeing what he can do. I'll be keeping an eye on him. And meanwhile, Randy Moore has now pulled away from the Mercedes of Caliber. His front Calibre's front left is just looking a little bit worse for wear. And I've got to say, the Aston Martin's tyres doing really well. Yeah, indeed. As I finally figured out how to get both of them up at the same time. Now we've got all the telemetry, Ethan. Uh, oh, was apparently brilliant. had to back out slightly and back into it on the uh, PlayStation button. And it triggered it all back up again. So there we go. So don't press 
some buttons on the thing, and it'll work, uh, which is always useful. Calibre, third position, slightly dropping back, 5.4 seconds off the race leader so far. Look, that gap slowly coming up, of course. It has been 20 minutes, and it has now just got to uh, just over 4.1 seconds, 4.2 to be more exact. Um, definitely looks like the top three have... A, a, a hefty more bit of pace. Oh, right Randy say. Moore went wide. He's caught the AstroTurf for Puon. No, oh, he's lucky to catch that. We're talking about the top three, and then we start nearly jinxing them. I mean, Randy Moore, oh, so nearly could have dropped that there. So scary. You, you carry that little bit of speed in, and you start getting ever so close to that AstroTurf, and then you start getting a bit scared when the car starts going out of your control. And just looking back again, and Splash just dropped off of Sonam. It seems to have quietened down a bit, waiting for the pit stops to see what that does. Just looking on the Kemmel straight, Kevin is catching up to the back of Simo as well in the Jaguar. His front tyres are looking awful. And I'm not quite surprised when he's dancing all over the place in the uh, braking zones. Obviously, quite not. Obviously, might not be quite acquainted with Spa Francochon. It is a challenging circuit for people who are new to it. Meanwhile, Mike, is he gonna try and line up a move into the infamous Blanchimont corner so far? Well, he's a braver man than I am to figure out driving these GT3 cars, but of course, you're not gonna throw around the outside there right now, especially on these worn tyres. Still waiting to see if any of the other drivers start to come in the pit lane. You can definitely see the forms starting to grow between the drivers. You've got the top three, really, and then you've got fourth and fifth, and then you've got sixth, seventh, and eighth, nice. all kind of lined together, and then behind, here of course. We, here we go. So to cut over you. Splash is rocketing up to the back of the THG Mercedes. Which way does it go? Left or right? It goes left. Oh, Sonam's going to give him a fight. That's what we love to see. It's been a bit quiet up until now. What can Splash do? Where can he find his way through? Sonam, and they're on equal tyres. Fuel's a bit better for the Mercedes, but the Corvette's lighter. Oh, that Corvette just flew out to the back of the Mercedes. It was like watching Lewis Hamilton with the rocket ship engine in the back of his W12. Hey, it Same certainly is. Fast. Colvert is a quick car in a straight line. The Mercedes is also a quick car in a straight line. It's two on two going at it. And so far, the battle for fifth and fourth heating up as well. I was looking in the meantime further down the field at Mike and uh, Donardi. That gap seems to have stabilised again at just under half a second. So those two close together. And they are, to be fair, slowly pulling in, I think, the car of Mountain King, who since the start has... Definitely dropped off the pace. Nearly 30 seconds off the race lead so far. But it is the Dodo going pretty well up front still. Yet again from second and third. In terms of fuel, of course, the Corvette just pretty much... Well, he's on a quarter of a tank from second. Just over a quarter of a tank. The tyre's starting to go off ever so slightly. They're all relatively equal right now so far and th this is going to be the interesting thing even is when if definitely is someone's going to trigger the undercut because we know how powerful it is we saw that in stint one and we've seen it in stint two as we see splash still right tucked up behind and remember splash did this so well of course in stint one you just wait until you get out of the top of el rouge and then just absolutely pull out and then do it right at the last moment. You can see him just waiting, just sitting behind. Get the toe up the hill. And now he'll pull to the inside. He'll have the outside line. And look at the speed the Corvette will get. But has he done it slightly too early? Led basically touching down the straight. Now he has the inside. But is that Mercedes got any out of speed to send one back up the inside? He thinks of it. There's a bit of contact, but not enough to... Uh, unsettle the Corvette and now splash back up in to fourth position these two are providing an absolute stonker of a battle again aren't they yeah that was and I feel like it's not a done deal I think splash is gonna have to work hard for this for this uh, fourth place in this stint because that was say oh he ran a bit uh, the Mercedes was looking like it was just 
pushing wide there. There was a lot, it seemed like a lot of turning understeer there. Just looking through the field again, just thinking about pit stops. I'm thinking it's usually around the half hour mark, we might start seeing some people trying to come in. I mean, personally, if you want, I think Dodo, uh, Kiwi Dodo, I don't think he's going to have to worry at all about any undercuts. I think he's got a maybe just enough time in his pocket just to go the extra lap come in and then have fresher tires or a lap extra fresher tires to you know overrule the overcut or the undercut from the other drivers just looking at Cal, but i think he will be the first one to come in yeah it also, could Nam definitely sizing be. up another move here what's he gonna do sure i don't think he's going to nah yeah, you don't dart the inside into uh, Blanchimont from that far back. You will end up in contact. The best opportunity, really, as we've said, wait until you get all the way down at two at the first corner. He's forced Splash to go slightly tight here. That's going to compromise his line. That's going to compromise it even more, especially when the rear tyres, which you have a look at it there, definitely starting to show there. Where is he? In fact, I'm going to look back on the rear end of the... Beautiful Corvette, of course. The lovely hand cooked tyres, of course, sponsoring this race. I'm pretty certain I can't pronounce it half the time, but I think I did that time even for once. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about Hankook sponsoring this event, unless. Um, well, I think they did. We've heard otherwise. Uh, I think it's just just um, just some sponsors that they put on the decal, nothing more than that. Well, let's see. They're going to go side by side yet again up the hill. Down towards the common. Let's see as the Corvette this time got later on the brakes. Let's see. Splash later on the brakes. They touch. They just about survive this time. They touch again on the exit for good measure. They touch again for the third time as the rear end gets all out of shape there. And the Corvette struggling. If I was Splash right now, I would be considering boxing right now. Those tyres aren't healthy. And he's starting to lose more time than it's worth, I think, battling with this. Yeah. He just need, I think the undercut could work here now. It's quite clear these two are quite quite similar on pace. If Splash provides an undercut, you know, he's... He might jump the Mercedes, but obviously, you know, this is an endurance event. This is a team event. THG are going to see this. They're going to be watching the stream, as all the other teams. They're going to be watching, and they're going to know when a car's, car's going to come in and how to react to it. You know, these people know what they're doing. There's a big group here. We've got three cars, six, seven, and eight for closely packed together there front tires oh holy moly they're looking bad right so yeah so splash has got about one lap of fuel left so he's not got long to go and so he does need to come in personally i think you'll see him him uh, see him in this lap and i think we're going to see the same with caliber personally as well i think caliber both xr cars will be coming in this lap yeah no, caliber's staying out Oh! Oh, Frandy's dropped it on the exit there, and how has he not hit the wall? Wow, that was lucky. Got on the curb. We've that's so easy to do on the AstroTurf, and he dropped it right in front of the camera. And that that almost could have ended. He's almost dropped it again. Those tires, Ethan, do not feel healthy. No, that's a spanner in the works now. Because all that time has now just gone out the window, and now he's well. I mean, yeah, look at his rear tires are better than Calibers, but he's now behind a slower car. What's going to happen now? Let's see. How, what how does this play? Oh, look at the Aston Martin! Just wow! Look at his amazing pace there. Can he out? Oh, yeah, he's, no, he's backed off. Didn't drop it on the car, but he dropped it just on the power, Ethan. Yeah. It just went. Perhaps a little bit too eager on the loud pedal. I mean, the V12 has got a lot of torque and it comes on very quickly. Na naturally aspirated V12. 12 cylinders of British horsepower. And it gave him a, a quick bite there. It's warning him of if you get on the power too early, this is what's going to happen. And... Well, wow, like I said, a true sparring of works here. How is this going to play out? Because these two might come out pretty much neck and neck here because their fuel is very similar. Uh, again, also the same with the THG Merck and the AXR Corvette. They're neck and neck as well. It's just battles all around. THG Mike and Mountain King, they're neck and neck as well. It's just madness all around and it's all nice and peaceful for dodo yeah and the dodo having a peaceful life up front like the actual one but uh 
Meanwhile, Mike really starting to close off a mannequin who is, is completely dropped off even from the start of this race. He was holding his own and then it just seems like his tyres are just I he's think struggling. He's fuel him. I think he's fuel saving as well. It definitely could be. Let's have a look. Definitely less fuel than uh, others in that. We'll see definitely in the straight line, but uh, depends how quickly THG can now close up. 14 seconds back down to the other Groot. Of course, you can see ever so slightly pressing the brake pedal on the exit of the corners I'm noticing as well, Ethan. You can see the brake lights flickering on, so I'm wondering... Watch him. He got our first pitter. Yep, splash. Triggering the undercut then. Try and get away from Sona. I mean, that, that's a pretty good thing to do, Ethan, isn't it? Yeah, just get out of the dirt, yeah. He's clearly faster than Sona, but... I mean, obviously now that splash is going to be coming out on fresher tyres... He's going to be automatically faster, but Sonam's going to need to provide the lap of his life to respond to this. Um, well, so uh, I'll keep an eye on where Splash comes out. You focus on the rest of the racing. Yep, indeed. So far, we've got a few battles going on so far. Of course, we've got Randy behind Caleb up, and that is the battle for second and third position. Seems right now they're pretty content of following each other. And we expect to see both of these drivers in at the end. Well, we expect to see... All three of these drivers in at the end of this lap even. So we're going to get a Hercule of pit stops in just a few moment timers on board with Mike as he continues to follow his fellow comrade up the road of Corvette who's keeping him very good company. And let's see, Corvette goes slightly covering to the inside. We, it's a little bit brave to try and launch one from the outside from here. And I think, yeah, Mountain Kings realise that you're not going to be able to pass from that far back. So is returned back to his humbled racing line but splash he's rejoined in ninth i see yep yeah, splash rejoined the circuit taking on toes and a full tank of fuel so not short fueling he's going the full distance with the pet uh, well with the petrol yes petrol we're racing fuel not quite sure what fuel uh, they use probably just some sort of concoction of chemicals right surely now we're gonna see oh randy moore again on the curb just nearly been in it out of stavlo 2 it's gonna keep him um keep him awake might need a new pair of uh pants after this uh, first stint should be seeing the leader way. in yes yep, leader leader in. In. all top three should be coming in even fourth fourth fifth and sixth should be coming in i imagine uh, Dodo's not going to have to worry at all about this. He'll still come out in the lead. Yeah, definitely. Looking at Sodam here right now, he has run the fuel to the absolute minimum it can go then as in he comes and his bright, bright blue mechanics of uh, nice bright blue wheels will uh, be ready to take him as well. So the first stages of pit stops on the way and we'll be seeing Donardi in as well as Mountain King Mike should be coming in in the next few laps so Splash it's going to be quite curious to see where Splash comes out in all of this as now you can see the first tyres going on Mike Randy Moore for another one Mike going for another lap interesting he's, he'll have enough fuel to do one more I personally I'd have not done that I'd have came in as well but what do we know he could be trying to do something but we know how powerful the undercut is as in Just comes Groot as well. So Dodo rejoins. And he will be in, of course, second. But we know he is the net leader of this race so far in this stint, right? We say currently Calibre in third position or second. He's pulled out a slight gap so far on uh, the car behind. That's because he has slightly underfield even. Now that could be quite interesting because he's going to try now pull a gap. Get away from the last... cars behind, and yeah. he did. So, he did this last uh, in the stint one as well, so... This time round, just hope he doesn't disconnect, and Splash has come out ahead of the THG Mercedes, less and field. crucially, outside of the toe as well, so now he should just be able to pull away. Yeah, little tack is right there, took slightly less fuel, you'll feel the pain maybe later run in the race, but it's gonna benefit him right now if and this is a big if he can start pulling away from that Merc and kind of try and close up to the back of his teammate or definitely to Randy so well the sister team might we say so let's see what they can do it's gonna be a tall order further back down the field by the way Mountain King uh, ahead of Kevin and these two closing back up again 
as well. Kevin, of course, who stopped earlier on on slightly more Warner tyres, but definitely slightly less amount of fuel. So those two battling away potentially in the future. Donardi's up the road ever so slightly. Whilst we are just waiting for, I think, one or two cars to come in the pit lane. And Dodo, well, he's already taken the lead of this race. As I believe, definitely short uh, shifting there, it looked like. Mike should be coming in the pit lane right now. Because that fuel leaf, and if I'm not mistaken, is non-existent right now. Yeah, uh, he's running on fumes there. And uh, Dodo, like you said, the short shifting. That's just the way you drive the Corvette. You short shift, that's where most of the power is. Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, Mike is in, his tyres are, I don't know how he's managed that. So, the gap between, uh, where is Calibre? So, three and a half seconds to Randy Moore. Hopefully now Calibre will just be able to do the laps he needs to do and just pull away. Like, it's just how much time can, does he, he need to remake is the question, just how much? Yeah, that is the big question in this afternoon's race, is just how much more time and brief heard there that they're apparently they are six laps down is that car now from my understanding they are not that far down i think there are only t two laps down so uh be good to see if someone can confirm exactly that but uh i saw someone saying it was two laps down and apparently it could be six laps down so it's a little bit of confusion right now but let me say caliber in second randy currently in third we are 20 minutes away from the first hour mark of this stint three of course and i hope you are all enjoying it as well stint four will be back on the uh wtrc channel as well so don't forget to go tune in to that later on indeed so donardi so far in six he is just cruising around right now ahead of mountain king four seconds and then of course that Lower fueled but slightly water tyres of uh, Kevin. Slightly closing up behind of uh, Mountain King. And you got to wonder, Ethan, is Mountain King going to be uh, fighting it too heavily here? Or is he going to be thinking the long game right now, knowing the car potentially, and presuming he knows the car behind stopped earlier on? Uh, to be honest, I don't think Mountain King has anything to worry about because Kevin, by the time he gets into the toe, his tyres might already be in that transitional period where they stop providing the grip that he needs to go fast enough to try and overtake the Corvette so I don't think he has much to worry about in my by the looks of it unless Mountain King makes a mistake but he hasn't made many of those not to my knowledge at least and Kevin he's been a bit uh, I by the looks of the lap times to be fair actually I was going to say looking at it again he's actually been rather consistent it's best that being a 15-5 which is not too bad uh, the Jaguar up front as well, Donardi, he's lapping pretty decent as well. They're all lapping very consistently here. Just looking at the gaps, it is not changing at all in the top three either. So it's all neatly spread out. So we're in a bit of a lull at the moment, but surely sooner than later... Well, actually, I say Mountain King hasn't made any mistakes. The gap was 1.3, 1.2. It's now below 7 tenths. Yeah, Kevin coming out, of course. Remember, a lot less fuel on that car, which we know, of course, less fuel you have, the quicker you go. That is just general logic uh, as well. And I have been confirmed, by the way, from uh, Liam, AXR Liam, that uh, they were six laps down from the leader after stint one, but two laps down on the last position. So that's where uh, I uh... probably got confused on that comment that I saw from someone, is that... Uh, Slight flash. I'm not wondering what's going on with Mountain King there. It just looked like he flashed the brake light ever so slightly. Or something's going on. It, something is definitely going. Look how slow it is in a straight line. He's got... Uh, potentially, is there an issue for that car? You can see, look. Fla brake lights definitely look like they flash slightly. Unless that's just the glow. Is it just a reflection? It is looks it like just reflection? a reflection from the sun. But there was definitely a flicker of the lights on the way down to Rouge. There definitely was. Unless... Oh, Kevin... That was forceful. Uh, maybe on the limit? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what steamed allowable in this in this uh, organization. Obviously, in some organizations, they have different tolerances on uh, aggressive driving. I'd say that's probably just about on the limit. Maybe just scraping past the line. But to be honest, I think Mountain King, his pace has just absolutely just disappeared. 
Indeed, again, look like just the rear lights ever so slightly flashing on there. I mean, uh, if you can uh, keep a potential eye on it, Ethan, every now and then and see. It is a lot if my eyes are tricking me, but up front, the dodo leads. There you can see the, uh, that's the Aston Martin of, uh, look, that's, that's Simone down it's there Simone in the 11. to the Jaguar, might I say. I always get confused between those two. They, from a distance, do look very, um, slightly very similar. similar. You can get yeah. mistaken very easily. It was the Mercedes second and the Mercedes, well, the Aston Martin in third. It's all going wrong right now here, but so far... It is just kind of the slight middle stage of this race where things are slightly starting to cool down. The driver's definitely getting on with their job. And what we can say so far, Ethan, it's the Germans running away from the Dutchers. Well, there's no Dutch, there's no Dutch driver. Well, the Belgium, it's, should I yeah, say. The Belgium driver, yeah. It's all, well, never mind. I can't there's speak. A there's a battle, I'd say, brewing potentially by Splash and Sonam again. Just the, the times are just so similar. It's just like one lap Splash is faster, next lap Sonam's faster. So that's one to keep an eye out on. Randy Moore is doing his own thing, lapping in the 214s. I'd say Caliber, he's settled in now and he's doing 214s as well. He's got Simo in the WEC Jag to lap here. Is Simo going to get out of the way? Um, well, I mean, that, that scared me a little bit there. And I'm not even driving. That uh, caught me off guard. Yeah, most certainly. Yeah. So, I'd that. say the calm before the storm, and oh, Simo has lost our pit one, and he's got some damage on the front suspension and some aero damage. I think he got a bit flustered by all the by the uh, the traffic lapping him there. I don't think he dropped it on the inside. Was that Larry for more? I, I don't know. I caught on to caught caught it at the last second by the looks of it, but he's. I, I'm not Ooh, quite sure how he's in the gravel now. It's all just going a bit wrong here for him. Yeah, it's definitely going to be uh, slightly downhill there, but long race, of course. You make mistakes, and it's all a part of the racing. You can make these small mistakes. There's no shame of it. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the learning experience. Well, the moral of the story is, is you know, even the best in the world get bitten by endurance racing you know there's just there's no denying it you can be the fastest driver on circuit it doesn't matter if that driver makes a mistake or if they're inconsistent so and like you said it's a learning experience as well so no he's <laughs> catching the uh, the barrier there as well but there's no harm no foul there's no shame either the, the main thing to do is to enjoy it that is the that is the number one factor for me in these races try and enjoy it as best as you can do it in a team spirit. You know, there's no shame in making a mistake because everybody makes a mistake. You know, I've done a few endurance races now, and in both of them, I have made a bit of a mess. <laughs> I, in both my stints where I've been racing, I made a mistake in my stint. So, you know, it happens to everybody. There are people who make le less mistakes than others, but everybody eventually does do one sooner rather than later. Just looking at the times... Caliber, he is matching the leader again, so interesting to look. And obviously, yeah, Caliber is short fuel in. Yeah. yeah Dodo, his tyres, but their tyres are so identical. It's, yeah, you can't tell a difference between them. Apparently, seeing that Kevin is a little, was, uh, is getting a little too aggressive on that Vets there, so, uh, we'll have a little look at it, of course, but, uh, it's definitely one of those things where you've got to... What's the word, Ethan? You've got to basically figure how aggressive do you want to be with two hours to go. You don't want to get a penalty either. That's going to be the thing. Yeah. Uh, from our understandings, I'm not sure if anyone has got a penalty. Of course, the stewards, I believe, I think might be is, looking at stuff. There's been notes. There has, there has been driving noted. Um, drivers are being watched. I'm not going to name... I'm not going to say who who's being watched, but I mean, cause there are drivers who are being watched. Those drivers will know if they're being watched. They'll know what they've done wrong. So yeah, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to work it out. Uh, just look, watching the gap between Sonam and Splash again it is so even. And 
the Mountain King, he's coming back on it. So like I said, that transitional period between the where the tires start dropping off, that transition period it has occurred and the Corvette or Mountain King now into the what is that? Go kart circuit down there as well. Yeah, the rest well, the go kart cool. circuit. Yeah, that's pretty cool to see there. I do love a bit of go karting. Some it's pretty interesting, but enough about go karting. More about endurance racing. This Corvette, look at the speed it's got. He's rocketing up there, late on the brakes. There as he tries, and well, he's well and truly up the rear bumper of that Aston Martin now. The question is now is how aggressive is it going to be? Uh, personally, I don't think it will be. I think it's going to be a quick and easy move but i'll probably get proved wrong oh let's see of course it's it's all really about you just hold back slightly here and then you just get the slipstream up the top and really there's not a lot you can do about it we know from experience even the corvette in a slipstream as long as it doesn't do that Ooh. is gonna be probably rocking up past it well, that well, might ruined. hold it down yeah that's just ruined any chance of an overtaking opportunity there but he's still, come, he's still getting there. Maybe the Aston Martin's in a different fuel mode. Surely not from back here, no. He's just showing his nose. I think there was a move on there, but he, the Mountain King got on the inside curb. Let's put it that way. If I was real life, that Corvette would be in a barrier in a million pieces. Uh, there was another flash of the brake lights there as well. Yeah, definitely. It does seem like I potential. Wonder, maybe I've had this issue before. You know, Evil, with my G29. It's, Maybe if he's running the G29, it could be entirely possible. I could be, he might be running something completely different. If he is running a wheel, is the brake pedal coming on? Is there a bit of a potential issue with the potentiometer where he's blipping ever so slight? I could be wrong, but that could be a thing. It definitely is. Something's not, something is arise. That could also tell potentially why his pace seems to be slightly more, uh, what's the word? inconsistent yeah fluctuating so maybe someone can uh let him know there potentially is an issue with that car but not with the car with his equipment oh kevin on the curb nearly dropped it this is an invitation for mountain king to try again now as long as he doesn't make a hash of it uh looking further through the field it is yeah this is the only battle that's really close by the looks of it so, what's Mountain King going to do? Is he going to send inside. it? Inside. Send up the inside. That'll be brave. And they'll make contact. They'll make a bit more contact on the entry, but it's all fine on the exit. And now the old switcheroo. And again, a little bit more contact there. It just seems Kevin definitely trying to hold his line as best he can. Now the outside line. It'll be awfully close in towards turn number one. Almost squeezing to the right line. This is turning into a great little scrap here for... Uh, 7th and 8th position and now yet again the run down towards our route and let's see a wonder if again we'll see that ever so slight of the blip of the brakes and it uh, might get I like away what, uh, I like what Mountain King did there he went wide out of the source to square off the corner so he could get a straight exit and it's paid him really well because look at the run he's got and there's nothing Kevin can do about it it's a done deal or is it? The outside line, he thinks of it. Can't quite do it though on the brakes. Of course, the tyres are going off substantially more on that car, as you can see there. And he, we expect, we presume as well, he'll be on the pits this lap, Ethan, because think of that feel. It's in the red. You will have maybe one more lap after it. The uh, Belgium driver, of course. As uh, I get it correct this time. Followed behind is the Dutch driver of uh, Mike. And then the Englishman down at the back as well. But Mountain King putting on the move there late on the brakes. Can't argue about that one. Further up the front, by the way. We've still got Dodo running up front by... Now it's only 4.7 seconds. It has slightly come down ever so slightly. And what, 214, 5, 214, 5, 214, 4s. These laps are amazing. They're so amazingly consistent. 6, 7, 6, 6. So... Even on less fuel, even on less fuel, Ethan, Dodo's hey, yeah, pulling away. Fuel, with, yeah, even with more, even, yeah, like I said, I didn't even notice that. With more fuel, he's matching caliber. And doing slightly better on tyres as well. Randy as well, with more fuel, matching caliber. So, obviously, 
like uh, AXR Liam said, Caliber must not be happy with the setup changes he's made. Clearly not working to his taste. Oh, hello. What's happening down here again? Mountain King under pressure yet again from Kevin, who again stays out one more lap. Is he going to go and try a, a move? His it, fuel, he, he can't do much more laps even. His fuel is non-existent nearly. He's going to get himself caught out here if he's not too careful. He, if he continues to try and battle it, you can see the rear end stepping out. Now, the lucky thing here is because he, yeah, flash of lights, no, flash oh, of lights. Oh, and look how much it's just. Flash cost. of lights. Look how much it just cost the Corvette. There's a real issue there with that Corvette, and this is going to be all about straight lining here. And that Aston Martin is going to be coming past. Again, it's flashing more and more, and you want to be careful following a car because all of a sudden, randomly, that car could suddenly slam the brakes on him without you realizing, because around the outside goes Kevin, and nothing can Mountain King do about it, and I'm wondering, does he know? Is oh, he's oh. coming back. Oh. Inside there a, line. <laughs> the, the door was open for an invitation there, and I mean, he took the invitation. There was a bit of a bit of contact. I was just gonna, I was gonna say that. Oh God, I was actually very impressed with that move from Kevin. There. That was very good. Oh, and he's murdering some cones there for no reason. What do they do? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I was, to, I was thinking about when they were going up through Rouge and Radio, and is it more tactical the breaking or the blipping? Is he doing it? So when Kevin is going for a move, Mountain King's in a position to attack back, is it, you know, so he can, so the move's done early by Kevin and then Mountain King can take the slipstream and Mountain attack back. I mean, it kind of worked. He was able to make the move again just after Lacom. So perhaps it's tactical. I mean, he's not gonna have to worry anymore because Kevin's gonna be coming into the pits this lap. So maybe it's tactics perhaps. Rather than an issue. Well, then again, why would you be blipping the brake on the run to Blanchimon for no reason? Yeah, that's the exact reason. So there is, like you said, and like we said, potentiometer issues potentially. Many P's in that uh, sentence, but the Aston Martin should be now coming in to the pit lane this lap because, well, as you can see, Ethan, uh, compared to everyone else who yeah, was no on, fuel. there is no fuel left in that Zero car. Liters. Zero. Uh, that, you might say, is running it to the absolute amount. And that is risky. Luckily, on this game, you can't physically run out of field and stop because you've run out of field. You will just trundle around, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, that is a thing. Um, when was the last... It was in a. It was in the AXR Nürburgring 24 hours where... I think it was a THG Supra pitted with no fuel and then got teleported out of the pit and then spent about the next... They, they were going around for, a, cut, for a, a long time. I can't remember how much it was, but it was a long time doing 50 miles an hour. And it was it was a sad sight to behold. It's kind of funny, but it was it was painful to watch. But... None of that happening here, but Kevin, he's timed it to perfection with the fuel. Um, back out with fuel, fuel, just uh, looking at through the field. So now his last lap, lap 24, a bit slower, 216.6, and he's down again. So it's allowing Splash to pull away. And the gap up front, uh, it's just, it's stationary. We're in a stalemate here. The, the low or the calm before the storm. Come on, guys, we need some battling. Pedal to the metal, Ooh, come on. that Corvette there of Mountain King on the absolute limit there. And that AstroTurf has caught many a driver out in my uh, racing. I've seen and commentating on F1 on GT Spot. It's so easy just to get a wheel on that. And you've got no hope because you are at pretty much the maximum load that car would probably do. In most cases through that corner, it's a high-speed left-hander. You get a wheel on that AstroTurf, you will be going off in a big way. Yeah, AstroTurf is a one-way ticket to off the circuit on this game. So there's the brake again. It was hovering on. I'm pretty sure that's a potentiometer issue there. It looks very similar to the issues I had with my G29 pedals. No surprise on a Logitech equipment there. They are atrociously bad. Didn't even last me a, a year, that, that wheel. Yep, and I don't know what happened to that. To the, Nearly coming up to the hour mark here, so one hour nearly down, two to go. 
on here, and as we say, so far, all nice and dandy for the drivers, is that, uh, have a little look through. Uh, even so far at the first hour, who's really been the standout for you so far? It's gotta be, it's gotta be Dodo, I mean, it's just, from, I mean, obviously he benefits from being so far ahead, I'd actually, no, sorry, uh, I just, no, actually I can't, I gotta take that back, because he didn't start on pole, did he, at the start, he started a bit further back, but he benefited from the team play of his own teammate, and it's been just a simple drive from there on in, and he hasn't had a single issue, not a single challenge from anybody else, and that's the way it's going to go for the next two hours. Unless something dramatically happens, like a disconnect, or his wheel goes, or something, if he's on a wheel, or lap traffic. But yeah, I mean, he's driving like a superstar. He's driving like a real GT3 driver would in a real event. Yeah. He gets my marks, put it that way. So I do a quick rundown of the last hour. So from the start, it was... The two Corvettes, so the key of, uh, well, I can't, Caffel, Twitch, Caffel Witch, or I think it's something like that. I can't, I'm afraid I, I have completely butchered that team name. But it was their team play that allowed this man, Dodo, to get into the lead and stay there. Meanwhile, Caliber and Randy Moore had a titanic battle for, well, for a second overall in this stim. And Randy Moore eventually got ahead, but then made a crucial mistake allowing Caliber to get through. And then Sonam and Splash, those two also battling for supremacy. And then the pit stops came around and they all came in serving their pit stops. Some drivers short fuel and night caliber to try and gain back a bit of time. Some going for the long stint. And then we had Kevin and Mountain King just recently engaging in battle. But that battling has stopped now since Kevin made his pit stop. So we're in a bit of a calm before the storm here. We're waiting for the next round of pit stops that will be coming in around the next 10 to 20 minutes. Um, so far, you did say you've been about uh, Mountain King. Well, I guess who's catching him now? As you can see, again, the brakes coming on right when you don't need it. it, it I don't know how much time even would you say that is actually costing the... Uh, is it the number uh, yeah, it could be. 86, 89? Could be could be quite a bit i mean it depends on how long they apply for it and how much force is applied it looks like it's just one or two percent but at a track like this especially on a place like look at that again there they blipped on again and look how much they're on there there's definitely a potentiometer issue there and it is going to cost a lot of time maybe three to five tenths just alone there that's just on the camel straight that's not adding up how much it's doing in other sections of the circuit so it could be adding up to over a second nearly I mean, think of it, that's compounded even more, especially in these longer races, and that, what's the chances up. that can get worse, Ethan, I'm wondering? Uh, I, I'm not too sure, really. I mean, it could just go. It, it could just go at any point if it wanted to. Or it could just keep doing it, just doing little blips. Or like I said, it can just suddenly decide, yeah, I've had enough now. So it's definitely going to need to be looked at in between this and the next event pretend well the next stint because you can just see look at it look at it look at look it at that, the gap is the gap is just completely gone to tatters now and that was a second and a half just over a well a sector so, ago so more than a second then he's lost this lap well that's not even half a lap yet this is Gonna be a proving issue yes, there, there for again. the Corvette, and we ride on board then with Mike. And let's see, does it come on now? It down here, and you gotta wonder, Ethan. This could become this could become very dangerous very quickly with different speeds. Especially yeah, if I you mean... get right up behind it, if suddenly the brakes come on, you are you're gonna have a very short amount of time to react. Oh, you probably won't have. It's just, it'll be inhumanly impossible to react so like like say so you see it come on there if he's right up behind him he's not gonna have a single chance to react to that and this corvette could be overtaken before we get to a rouge here but mike's just gonna have to be careful that those brake lights don't come on too suddenly they do come on i see it's just little nibbles there goes a tenth i not even attempt there goes 10 milliseconds and the gap's evening out again oh it must be so painful knowing 
I mean, like I said, it, I don't think it's tactics at this point. I do, gen do generally think there is an issue there. Oh, you don't want to be that close. You can see the crate is coming on the outside line. That's going to be brave. Good breaking there, and they do touch on the exit. Luckily, oh, no damage. Apex there, didn't it? Yeah, parked on the apex. You can see rear end of the BMW slipping and sliding all the way around. We haven't spoken about him by much, might meanwhile, up the road. Donati in safe position. He is driving a stellar job right now. Just minding his own business. Just kind of keeping his own pace. We'll have a look at how his lap times are doing. 17, 16, 16, 16 to 16. As many 16s. Last lap was 17, so it may mean he's made a slight mistake. But very consistent lap times, Ethan. Yeah, the benefit of just running by yourself. I mean, it, it is bliss. You get into that zone and it's smooth sailing unless something dramatic happens he's 1.2 down now i think his tires are, are possibly the reason for that but i mean his times are yeah they're really good he's not had anything to worry about the people around him are you know lapping at the same as him so it's not like he's slow he's just in his own little world doing the lap times he needs to and keeping it clean and i mean he could benefit maybe from some issues from drivers up ahead we're just wait, obviously still waiting to see what the stint times are like from stint 2. And obviously we'll be able to get a good picture of where everybody is. So hopefully we'll get those soon as I'm just looking at Calibre now. Yeah, his last lap 217-0. 2.15.8 there from uh, Randy. So he must have made a mistake in that last lap somewhere. We, of course, we haven't caught it up whilst I uh, continue Calibre's the... Uh, in as well. Yeah, whilst I keep a little eye on this... Uh, battle between 8th and 7th position as Mountain King trying as much as he can to hold on and he is doing such a good job all things considered with the issues he has that he's holding on to this because normally you'd imagine with these braking issues and I have experienced it on the G29 it's not nice uh, and then I also have experienced the a throttle issue where it doesn't come off the throttle and that that's less nice because, well, full, I'd rather get full brake than full throttle, Ethan. That's probably uh, the, yeah. a very good thing. Well, I, I've been kindly, uh, kindly been sent a screenshot of this, uh, the results from... Oh, there's uh, some contact there. Uh, kindly been sent some stint times, I think, from stint 2 by Adam Wareham, who's in the chat as well. So thank you very much there. Just looking at the stint times and... It looks pretty close looking at the uh, stint times. We're just still waiting for the Ooh. main charts to come through. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that the KWE Corvette or Dodo and I'm going to have to get the, uh, the driver's names up. I do have them. Uh, I should. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Uh, Dodo and I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. Uh, Number Corvette number one, Corvette one. Yeah, they are almost definitely in the lead. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I CHR one one two M. Yeah, and then we got THE, the humble guys racing or Sonam and the Mercedes. I think they're definitely in the top five as well potentially. So maybe X. I think AXR are definitely in the top five as well. The AXR Corvette, the AXR Mercedes. I feel like that is just on the fringes of the top five as well. It's a bit, it's not exactly easy to know when you're kind of just thrown in, not knowing what the gaps are. But I think we just do know that it's GTSV Ooh. versus the KWE number one Corvette, let's put it that way. Yeah, sliding, meanwhile, talking of Corvette, is the number 68 Corvette, or sorry, the number 89 Corvette sliding around. And let's see outside, inside, outside line. So far, the Corvette goes slightly deep. Let's try and straighten the line up in the exit. But remember, the Corvette going slightly deep will have a better, better straight line speed. Slightly, until this happens in a few seconds. If it comes on now, you can just see it ever so slightly flickering. But the interesting thing, even, it hasn't come on, as far as I'm aware. Few, I don't think it up has, Rouge. it? No, uh, maybe... It could be tactics. Maybe it's decided to fix itself. Who knows? This is where it comes on and just absolutely obliterates the BMW. Let's that would see be really outside. Awful. Let's see He's late tried this breaking. A few times, hasn't he? Can he go Let's around the outside? That's going to be brave. Does it around oh, the dude. outside? What a little move there from the BMW. Is over yet on the exit? Can the Corvette 
get any little bit of slipstream on the inside. He has the nose in. Late breaking from the number 89. The number 269 has to now try and hold it around the outside into Brussels. Can't quite do it yet again. A little bit of a sliver on the rear from the Corvette just on the exit. The BMW gets a bit of power on the exit as well. Gets the rear out. And these two are just going at it. And this is turning into a lovely battle here. Is Calibre in the pits then from second. Both XR cars in. Yeah, you got to say that battle between well, the battle between the BMW and the Corvette, two cars that are so completely different. The, the big V8 Corvette, the big BMW shares a V8 uh, turbocharged V8 as well. Both have their strengths and weaknesses, and the BMW, it's it's a very good handling car. It's got the punch out of the corners because it's turbocharged. Yeah, it's, but the Corvette, it is it just. It is like a punch to the face just how fast the car just looking at i've just noticed as well looking at the back of the tires if you look closely you'll see the 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 tire carcass moving around it's not it's dancing around a little bit or at least i can see that it's a, it's a little effect there so caliber he's come out again with about i'd say about 85 percent fuel potentially fresh tires again uh, where's splash he is coming out on full tank of fuel and tires as well so it was Mike again looking for any way which around in this Corvette this is the opportunity here the Corvette goes wide but the Corvette's got the punch oh that it must be so tantalizing having the exit like that and then the Corvette just is like nope yeah but now look and the exit and now we'll get the slipstream effect straight away but now it's gonna be you'll have to cover inside again do the same thing can he get alongside? Has he got enough on the brakes to try and sliver on around the outside? Mountain King will want to be braking slightly later. Slightly squeeze him wide. That's what he's done. He's done that pretty well this time around. Holding his line on and on. The BMW again trying to go around the outside. Now is it going to be almost a repeat of what we saw? The Corvette pulls the inside line. He's not going to fall for the trick that Mike fooled for a lap and a half ago. And these two continue on their merry way through the field. Splash in sixth position now. He is behind. That'll be of Denardi in fifth, of course. Calibre way ahead of these guys. He is doing the same strategy. Just over a quarter, about well, three quarters of a tank of fuel. Might we say about 76% fuel, I think. There's no 78%, nearly 80. Splash yeah, going for there. a fuel fuel. Yeah, there's obviously quite different strategies going on here. The Corvette, you know, it's fuel hungry, so it makes sense to fuel fuel it. And obviously, Caliber, he's going aggressive with the short fuel in to try and make up the time. I just don't know how much time he is actually making up with a slightly underperforming setup. I mean, this battle for, for seven between the BMW and the Corvette is just mesmerizing. Kicking up the dirt there. Oh, I believe I thought he was. Gonna... It was a very sudden lunge to the right there. I'm just wondering who's gonna come in. Is anybody gonna trigger an undercut between the two of them here? Because I mean, they can't do this forever. I thought for a second he was about to do that then, actually. But thinks better of it. Well, hopefully we carry on forever. This is great to watch. I hope they. This would be awesome if they came on at the same time and then continue bang for the next. Uh hour and 47 minutes and just under 50 seconds right now but um you can see the rear end stepping out and the tires going more and more with eight passing that and now becomes the situation of starting to do some tire saving for some of these guys a little further down the field by the way we haven't looked who's further behind we have got Groot in a uh, ninth possession we've got kevin so far in 10th after he pitted earlier on. And Simo, he is 4 minutes and 19 seconds behind. But he is carrying on his merry way to 21 threes. Uh, lap times. He has got two penalty threes in the actually. So that is why there's two laps that are uh, not showing. 2.19.7 is fastest person lap on lap 25 of his stint so far. So pace started to come down. He definitely seems to be enjoying it as the top two. Well, on cue, come in the pit lane at the same time. And Randy Moore taking it to the brit, well, taking it right down to the the last fumes here. 
I just wonder where's Caliber? Caliber, he's on his way to Blanchimon. Sonam's in as well, so let's see where Sonam comes out compared to Splash. Here we go, this is where it's crucial now. Where is Randy Moore gonna come out? He hasn't even made it to his pit box yet. Oh, here he is now. Here is the, I've got to say, a beautiful Aston Martin there. The tyres come off, the new tyres go on, the jacks are lowered, the fuel's going in. Caliber, he's making his way across the start ahead. finish line. He's, I think he's going to be ahead, you know. But Randy Moore is going to be on the fresher tyres. He will be inherently faster. Well, a bit ahead. He's, he's pretty close to uh, he's, Dodo, he's, actually. He's way ahead. He's well ahead. Splash is coming around the corner as well, I think. Is he not? Splash is coming across the line right now. The uh, telemetry uh, slightly uh, making it look closer Seven than it is. Seven seconds up the road. For Caliber, he's going to have worse tyres, though. I see that. This is, this is a real, real interesting dilemma because... Randy Moore on heavier fuel. I mean, they they lap it so closely. I just don't think there's anything we can do about it. Mountain King in. This is going to bring... Well, it allows Mike to carry on. He's going to be in soon, though. Well, it's going to be interesting to see where Kevin comes out in all of this now. Because these, Kevin was battling earlier on, remember, with the uh, Corvette. I wonder if these two are going to be uh, returning the, uh, the old the battle from earlier now. on. Let's see. The car's down off the jacks. The fuel's going in. Where's the Aston? You can hear it howling down the pit straight. Gonna be ahead. You're definitely ahead, yes. In fact, with half very the tank ahead. though, so he's gonna be in soon. Let's so see. the position should be restored to normal. In fact, it might be pretty close to to uh is that Kevin coming through uh Simo. It's Simo, never mind, it's Simo actually, my apologies, they're just coming through the last corner in the, uh, the number, is it the, what number is the Aston Martin, it's the no, number it's, 25. Uh, 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 yeah, the Jag was 25. Yes, the Jag, I, I always, I will one day get the Aston and the Jag correct, like I say, I always get confused of them, uh, there is the Aston Martin, the DVX on the front, the number 68, Car. In fact, that means we have our 268 cars even. I mean, that was 89, never mind. I'm just getting confused right now. But Dodo, 2.7 seconds that gap right now. It has come down. Last lap, well, 2 minute 8 there. Of course, that is inaccurate because he has came in the pit lane. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's always teleported him out. So slightly, it just it shows it being slightly more uh, confusing than it does. Luckily... He doesn't give him the fast lap. The fast lap of this race, owned by uh, Randy Moore so far, with a 2 minute 14.308 uh, for the Aston Martin driver. 10 seconds ahead of SDM Splash, who, of course, is 8 seconds ahead of Sonam. And then we've got Mike, who should be coming in the pit lane right about now in the BMW to uh, come now so drop him back behind his uh, fellow comrade again who has been battling so heavily but he'll now have slightly fresher ties later on in his own little thing maybe take a slight bit less fuel maybe try and keep with him maybe get ahead of him because these two being battling his Groot also comes in the pits as well uh, just checking where kevin is kevin's into the entrance of the bus stop so mike will come out behind the aston martin you see the bmw's only just pulled up to its uh, pit stop slot so kevin will be ahead where is mountain king he is also at the bus stop now so mike will come out behind the corvette potentially it's gonna be awfully close actually is mike where's he's still sitting there the fuel's still going in the fuel pipes out where's the corvette oh it's gonna be insanely close yeah and he's... the corvette's ahead yeah, it's like we said, it's, it was all going to come down to who triggered the undercut. It, it was awfully a lot closer than I thought it was. So, it's going to be now about who can chase. As you can see, the rear end getting slightly stepped out on those curbs. Managed to catch it yet again, though, with now what is just over one hour and 40 minutes to go. And now, again, these two are... Gonna do battle in a few moments' time, Ethan, I imagine, as we've seen throughout this race. Gap up front, and we'll see the uh, true pace now. Two minutes, 
14.6, 2 minute 14.5. But remember again, Ethan, a lot less fuel for Calibre than Dodo. And I... Uh, yeah. It, it's an interesting strategy. I don't know if it, how much it's working. It's definitely keeping him with the race leader. And of course, you, you realise it in context that this car is a, some, a few laps down. So really, as close as you can keep to the front, this is doing the best job they can do. Because yeah. they're closing up to the rest of the field. I think it's definitely closing the gap. But it's just how much is it being closed? I mean, until we know, I mean... The pace is there, but the pace of the field is actually really close. Like Sonam, he's not slow exactly. Yeah, nor is Denardi. So I mean, Caleb is just in a rock and a hard place here. Because like we said, he got drafted in very late into this race into a car. I mean, I don't know how much he likes the Mercedes. And the Mercedes is not exactly an easy car. I mean, with a setup, it, with the right setup, it can be a dream to drive. But if you set it up wrong. It can be a bit of a pig, and I don't think the Mercedes is set up best suited for Calibre right now. He obviously he's obviously tried something, uh, maybe ta maybe something a bit experimental, something maybe a bit aggressive, and it's not paid off paid off the way he wanted it to. Looking at the leader, the gap's coming down a bit. So, like I said, that fuel maybe playing into the hands of Calibre there. I mean, he's definitely gaining time slowly, but surely just in a 12-hour race to gain back the amount of times that uh, the amount of laps they lost through a disconnect, it's, it's a tall order. So I don't think a, pod a podium might still be possible, potentially if things for other teams go south, but it, it's a massive order to get this car back up to where it belongs. And especially as we have now got was just under, if I'm not mistaken, four hours... And 39 minutes left of this race, if I'm not mistaken, after this, as I... If I am mistaken, at least. Uh... Yeah? Well, ship, yeah, we're, well let's put it this way. We're, we haven't got long left. <laughs> yeah. We're over the halfway mark. We'll say it that much. Uh, 2.5 seconds the gap. 2.6 seconds the gap. It's now opening ever so slightly up. Randy Moore, 9 seconds behind. And then, of course, like we said, we got Splash... Doing pretty good laps, by the way. Again, 249s, 249s, and the 215s. Uh, very s consistent lap times throughout. And th this is just the thing in these endurance races. It's consistency and all about when and where to battle. Uh, I mean, what are talking of battles? How's our battle potentially brewing up? How's that gap looking? 3.4 seconds between Mike and Mountain King. I, if I'm not mistaken, seems Mountain King... Potentially, his brakes may... We'll have a little look quickly. Are they still flickering? Let's see at the moment. Looks like maybe it could have... Uh, whatever it was, fixed itself loose. And that, that can happen even, can't it, with the potentiometer. Maybe it maybe could have just been a bit of dust that's got in there and it's finally got itself loose. Perhaps. Maybe, maybe he was able to solve the issue during a pit stop, perhaps. Yeah, the tip, pit stops are long enough to potentially have enough time to sort them out. I mean, it's enough time to do a splash and dash if you desperately need to uh, relieve yourself if you're, fast, if you're fast enough. Um, obviously, we're in another uh, lull at the moment. If anybody's got any questions, so you're tagging along in the stream, please feel free to... Uh, no, his brakes are still... Uh, his Iron King's brakes are still flowing. But like I say, if you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll answer them. And... Um, Obviously, uh, hopefully when we get to GT7, yeah, we'll be able to do more events like this. But obviously have the the time and day and the weather to set in and stuff like that, etc. Just add a bit more of a dynamic to it, you know. Most certainly, Andy. And I got sent something very nice in a message from AXR Liam. As well, I got a lovely uh, thing. So thank you very much for that. That's uh, the spur. That's the spur we need, Ethan. Right there, I'm watching in at the background as Dodo carries on his merry way from Calibre in second position. Randy Moore, third position so far, 10.3 seconds. The gap's dropping ever so slightly, but it's so consistent right now, Ethan. This is turning into incredible as the uh, lovely sun 
above this circuit. If I'm not mistaken, what time is it in game? It's, uh, uh, three. Uh, it's, it is, no, it's, um, quarter to five. That's the quarter to five. Forty-five. yeah. Setting right now, of which it's, uh, quarter to six right now in real life UK time. Uh, let us know wherever you are around the world as well. And what time it is where you are so far. I know we have a lot of people watching from different parts of the world indeed. So, that is that one. As this race starts to come now towards pretty much the midway, exact midway stage of this race even. Yeah, we're at a halfway point now. And it's been, been uh, pretty, I'd say calm. We've definitely had a, f a few battles. Nothing drastically over the limit, which is great to see. People have kept it nice and clean. Obviously, some people have still, uh, you know, not impressed with some stuff and have reported stuff. But... Ah, oh, I got an instant hair refund. THG Mike. Now, he's hit the wall somewhere. Rear right corner. Damage, and he is going to be coming in the pit lane. Now, I'm wondering... Where's he drop that? Yeah, where's he going to drop that to get rear right damage? I mean, unless he's dropped... Is it to, and only to lose 17 seconds. Has he gone backwards into Stavolo 2? Uh, it could be likely, of course. We uh, can't get a, a camera down. Well, the replay won't go back that far. So... That is... Uh, it's, rear dam it's obviously rotated around somewhere because... That seems like he's caught Astro Turf somewhere. Or well, maybe on the exit Stablo 2 as well. Yeah, you know, whether you've got the curb uh, the curbing on the right and the but on the le on the right and the left, sorry, and on the the Astro Turf and stuff. So maybe he has just dropped it there and he's gone backwards into the barrier on the right hand side of the circuit. Yeah, most certainly it, it's always many different possibilities. So unfortunately that is a hamper for the car of the BMW. The number uh, 29, 269, is it the 269 car? I think it's 6, uh, what is it, 6, no. It's the 269, is it not? Yeah, 269, pretty sure. Yeah, there we go, 269, past it goes, and it's lovely blue swells. But up front, the number one leading in position one. Here and outright leading as well, if I'm not mistaken. Currently, 3.1 seconds ahead of the AXR car, which will be taken over in just over an hour and a half by AXR Liam as well. The number 67, if it's not mistaken right there. Yeah, there we go. Number 67 comes right into view there as it blasts past down into what can be described, Ethan, as some of the most fun corners on any motor racing circuit. Downhill, left corner, a slight dab of the brakes to chuck it in. And it, it's such a difficult corner, isn't it? I mean, we won uh, oh, and Fania and uh, Savalo Kevin in as Kevin well. Kevin is all for damage. Is that uh, both? And he's got front and uh, he's got front damage as well. So both THG, well, two THG cars. Uh, both suffering from some damage midway through the stint, so maybe a bit of complacency drawing in, maybe some tiredness. It's starting to, maybe some drivers starting to be affected, but yeah. I mean, P1 through to Stavolo 2, it's a good section of corners. It's not my favourite in the world. I like the uh, the back, the back end of the Nordschleifer after the carousel down to the Dostica Her, the big massive straight. Just from the carousel to the big straight, just that section of circuit, I'd say some of the best in the world. Yeah, the Spa's not too bad either. Now, of course, both Spa and Nürburgring only separated by, if I'm not mistaken, from... Uh, it's about 30 kilometres. They are incredibly close between each other. Uh, that's why it, you'll often hear if it rains, if the rain's coming from the source, Allegedly, it comes from the Nürburgring. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that is correct, but they are, geographically, pretty close. That's oh, Splash getting all sorts of out of shape into turn number one. Tyre's definitely going. He's done that a few times there, getting the power on early. And the Corvette, it, it is easy to snap the rear on, isn't it, Ethan? Yeah, it is. It does like to bite at you. I mean, any car likes to bite at you, but the Corvette is one of those cars where it's got a lot of grunt, very quick. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's thankfully, you know, he's not suffering too much from it. It's just that the tyres will eventually start to, you know, suffer if that keeps happening. You just want to get on the on the power nice and gently to eke the tyre life. Yeah, in terms of uh, fuel and Caliber stuff, with a time penalty, <laughs> five ten penalty, and I'll, uh, presumably I'll be down to I've the seen. source. Yeah, well, it's the first one time we've caught it as well. Uh, it looks like pretty much everyone apart from I think I saw someone earlier on get, got a second penalty and uh, that got cleared pretty quickly as Mountain King just cruising around right now he's currently in probably the most loneliest part of the race nearly apart from him and Donardi very lonely right now because well 37 seconds and 26 seconds or running wide and running oh you want to be careful there as you can see the brakes coming back on for that car. Oh, that was a heavy brake then. And that doesn't look good. Oh, yeah. Mountain King. That, that actually came up spiked on the uh, little um, brake indicator. So that look that it, it does seem it could be getting worse. Uh, let's it hope be, it's not. But uh, that's dropped to about four seconds now. Back down to uh, Ward's Groot. That's slightly going wide into turn number one. Donardi, like I was saying, in no man's land so far. Sonam splash, pretty much the top five, kind of all in the in the same area of the circuit. Give or take, they're in the first half. So, it, it's... Just watching Caliber, his times have been getting slowly slower. Yes, his tires are just not clinging on like the Corvette. I mean, his times have been fluctuating. Uh, Dodo's times have been fluctuating up and down. No, but he's going quick. Calibers are slowly going up as well. Yeah, the last lap time from uh, Dodo. Of course, it might have been helped by a bit of a toe. Uh, 14 3 one That is his personal best. and But well, quite literally, 10 thousandths off of the uh, outright best, which is a 214.308. So, very close to the uh, the ultimate pace so far in this race. is Randy, third position. He's got still half a tank of fuel remaining in the lovely number 68 Aston Martins, the DB, is it the DB11? No, that's the V12 Vantage. It's the V12 Vantage, I always get confused with them. Thinking of a slightly older version of the Aston Martin, aren't I? Yeah, you're thinking of the DB9. Yes, which is uh, historically not very good on this game, is it? Um, no, it's not a very good car. <laughs> Bit of a pig to drive. It's that a lovely looking thing. Yeah, it's lovely. Sounds lovely, but not very lovely to drive. Yeah, indeed, because it works quite well, especially compared to the, well, the uh, GT, well, the Ford GT LM, of course. The the car that's probably, arguably, you could say the most famous on this game, uh, potentially, in terms of Gran Turismo, because, of course, it's the Gran Turismo 4 cover car, especially if you put the correct livery on it, it's... Uh, and gives you nice flashbacks from the olden days. But, uh, not mistaken, Ethan, you've never played that game, did you? What game? GT4, or does it? You played GT4. GT4? I played I played it loads. Or is it someone else who didn't play GT4? Yeah, I'm I think it was of... Lewis Edwards, you're probably thinking of. Some yes. random dude. Some but, random yeah. person we know called Lewis who doesn't, who yeah. doesn't play but, yeah, GT4. Yeah, I played a lot of graduates before, and the Ford GT was like my hero car on there. Yeah, it's a hero car. As we can see, all the lovely... Brand new cars, of course. Some fictional, some real, some real, of course. The Mercedes 20 is in 2015 Mercedes, isn't it, Ethan? It's, uh, 20, it's getting on a little bit now, isn't it? Yeah, obviously there's the Evo variant out there. There's a lot of Evo variants. Obviously we're getting the 2019 Audi R8 GT3 Evo in GT7. Obviously we're getting the 2017 Ford GT LM. Maybe we might see some new... GT3 cars that haven't been teased yet or shown. Obviously, Toyota recently announced their GT3 concept that they want to uh, enter into the GT3 racing series, so we might get that as well. Obviously, last year as well, there was a, a Genesis even made some GT3 concepts. Even they made a ton of concepts. They did. They had like three Group Ones, a Group Four, a Group Three, and a Group X. So. We might see plenty of manufacturers, or as Randy Moore has just completely made a hash out of the exit of Brussels there. But yeah, we're going to see plenty of GT cars, something plenty, uh, plentiful in Gran Turismo. 
kind of just want to see some see some different types of cars, you know, some different classes of cars, like LMP2, something like that. Oh, nice slide though, I might say, from Randy. He caught that one pretty well. Like we, we said that before, how easy those cars can uh, slide when you get the rear round out. And yeah, we said, there we go. And I'm wondering even, what is the oldest car in this grid? It's the Aston Martin, isn't it? The Aston Martin, yeah. The Aston Martin, it's like 2012, I think, it started racing the V12 Vantage up until 2018. Of course, the Corvette, and you could argue it's... It's 20, just as old. Yeah, 2014, just as old the as well, uh, C7, yeah. isn't it? Because I remember the Stingray, of course, in GT6, it came out early 20, late 2013, early 2014, which was uh, in its in weird kind of tartan black all over it. Looked oh, it was very a camo. Spooky. Yeah, it was the uh, camo car. It was like a, it was like the, it was literally a prototype. Is what they do to test, to test their cars. You see the cars in camo and blankets and stuff like that to hide the identity of the cars when they're testing it. And then, I was led the Stingray name returning, of course, with that car. But meanwhile, looking at the. Mercedes AMG, of course, that took over from the SLS that ran, of course, between 2010 and 2015, pretty much. A car that you might say is very uh, famous in its own right because of just how beautiful it was. And, of course, the AMG, in its own way, pretty much synonymous on this game because of a certain... Uh, Time troll that exists is uh, Calibre gets him all out of shape on the exit of Brussels as well, Ethan. Yeah, they're obviously struggling there, but yeah, the MG GT, I mean, I actually prefer the SLS. I think it looks better, I think it sounds better. It was, uh, just, well, I'm on board with uh, uh, Sonam as well, and he's got a completely wrong at Lake Cobb. Uh, what is that Aston Martin doing? getting out of the way, but he didn't know which way to go there. He's trying to pull to the left, realised angle, and that's the racing line, pull to the right. And yeah, that's kind of awkward. You don't want to do that. You want to pick one line and stay to it, because the last thing Caliber or anyone wants to do is suddenly come across a car and go, well, which way are you going? Go one way, and then that guy moves, and then all of a sudden, that is it. Straight into the back, and you are in big trouble. But yeah, that's really, mine. I, gets we don't know... I, obviously, we're not quite. I'm not quite sure what the blue flag ruling is here. I don't know if it's just the car behind has to make its own way through. Obviously, with rules like that, it's usually the car that's being lapped. It's just wise to just stay and pick your just to stay on the line that you're on and let the car behind you pick their way through without causing any confusion. But weaving from one side of the circuit to the other it doesn't help. But obviously, there was no Ooh. harm, no foul, or anything like that. So. Now, do you know what we said earlier on about penalties? Bob Donardi, well, he's getting rid of it now. But uh, 3.7 seconds of penalty he just had then, so he got four seconds. Now, how has he done that? Where did he have got four seconds? Unless he's accumulated that over that. I think he's gone off down into the and gone maybe, wide. Maybe, maybe. Four, or, five, or he's just it? accumulated it, perhaps. And he's got rid of it now. As uh, we head in through the uh, 6 p.m. mark, of course, one hour... 20 minutes still to go ahead of the drivers and it's definitely shaping up to be one of the races where it's still got action but of course we are heading in towards in some drivers towards the middle of the night for some of them of course here in the UK it's now 6 p.m. right about now it's well yeah pretty it's much exactly next. pretty much 6 p.m. yeah uh, of course, in some other places, it's 7, 8 p.m. And depending where you are from, it could be coming up towards a lot later than that. Or even it could be quite early in it the could be morning. For some people. It could be, yeah, it could be if you're racing in some places. But uh, let me say, through the field we go and want to look at through the liveries. Ethan. We've had a plenty of good look. What do you say is uh, what some of the standout liveries here? Um... Well, I don't know. I quite like the THG Merc that Sonam and TSC40 right now. It just looks so American. It just looks so American. And it's, it's a great livery, if you want my opinion. I mean, it, the flashes are blue and white and red and the, the blue rims. It's an awesome livery. 
It just, it's just, it, like I said, it just looks so American. It's the type of livery you'd see racing in IMSA. I've got to say the GTS V Aston is also up there as well. But yeah, I, I got to say the if you if you if I was to pick the best livery, yeah, I would feel it would be the the uh, number 55 Mercedes. I I would have to uh, go and say my probably my Carlet definitely seems to work the wellest, well the wellest, the best with the sponsor on the rear ring. Uh, it has to be the Aston Martin, of course. The orange, white, and black. It just seems to. Uh, all blend together as I got a confirmation that, that that cars do have to move out of the way. So uh, yeah, as uh, as I presumed and thought as well, as you can see blue flags flying, that is a uh, caliber and that would be uh, probably just delayed blue flags from the car behind actually, which is the Aston Martin. As well as you can see up the road there, looks like, is that Kevin or is that the car ahead of Kevin? That's Groot getting out of the way of the race leader in the kind of it, it, it's hard to explain it's a kind of camery livery isn't it Ethan with the yeah. uh, how it's worked it's like a bunch of like you know just triangles and angles and stuff that's been well it's probably to be fair it could just be one whole decal and it's been blended all together perhaps you know like there's some way people do it obviously the livery editor on G Sport it's decent but it's got its drawbacks and it's been improved upon in G7 by quite a lot like there's so many more things that are going to be able to be done to the cars like, yeah, you could be able to make your own custom banners on the windows, put your names on the side of the cars, they don't have to do it as a decal. There's it's just going to be so many improvements that are just going to make the cars and people... people uh, it's going to make the cars look awesome, but it's going to allow for some amazing creativity uh, of the uh, player base. I can see, meanwhile, the uh, Corvette, again, sliding around on the uh, race. Having a look at those tyres, by the way. Um... It's definitely starting to go off slightly. Front's definitely worse than Randy's. But uh, around about the same as that's uh, Donati. It's around about equal to the car behind as well. In terms of fuel, of course, splash a lot less fuel. In fact, talking of fuel, I should be seeing Caliber in now, shouldn't we? Because he should yeah. be... Yeah, well, <laughs> talking of Caliber and looking at his fuel. I'll be shocked if he didn't come in because that fuel is non-existent. And he'll be doing what? Three more stops. Yeah, about three. Yeah, three. I'd say three more stops. We've got a long way to go. It's still an hour and twenty to go yet. So he's just got to keep plowing on, doing what he's doing. Randy Moore. He's got about another five to ten minutes of driving to do. Same with the leader. Splash. He's going to be coming in soon as well. So now he will be coming in soon too. I must say, yeah. I do like the uh, the mechanics that uh, Caliber's got. Very Red Bull-esque with uh, how they've been uh, with the outfits they're wearing. As uh, you can see in the cockpit, the lovely thing. If that looks like almost like a uh, West logo, actually, potentially. Let's have a look at this. Get the uh, helmet up if it lets me uh, see. Yeah, Nicholas, it's, of course, Caliber. And that is, that here is West uh, sponsoring. It's kind of like uh, Kimi Räikkönen's esque helmet so uh i'm presuming he's got some uh inspiration let's have a look through helmets actually as i can actually get them up actually so we've got the a very well it's a camel axe that's a lovely little uh helmet there it's run is that say run camel or something there on it it's hard to see it of course through there but um it's a little lovely little helmet uh kind of beautiful like it's it's helmet, does. doesn't it? and then of course you've got randy he's running a default helmet Splash, of course, as we uh, allude to, he's also running a default helmet. Sonam is running a a very retro-esque helmet as well. That's a, a nice little one. Uh, the blue and the black and the red uh, mixed with the white as well with some little other decals on there. Calibre, as he mentioned, running a kind of... It reminds me of a Kimi Raikkonen helmet. I might be wrong. Donati is running a simple but effective design with uh, the white and the blue. This is uh, absolutely wonderful. Mountain King running a default helmet from uh, the looks of it. Groot is running... Um, well, I can only describe it. It's, got, it's definitely got a pattern on the front. It's blue. 
I'll give it that one. It's definitely blue. Kevin, he's also running a Diva helmet. This kind of reminds me of the old GT6 helmet, actually, with the gold. Uh, THG Mike as well running a default helmet, as uh, you can see there, Simeo getting out of the way, and he is running a helmet that definitely looks like it's got the British flag on it. That's quite a, that's a nice looking helmet. I'm gonna keep that up so you can have a little look at it as well. It's got, definitely got the Union Jack on it, but, um... No, uh, Mike's in with half a tank of fuel, no damage. Splash is in. Splash is also in. Fuel. That's that's scheduled. But Kevin, uh, not Kevin, Mike. Why is he in? That is very strange. Ty tires, maybe. He might not feel comfortable. Something there. Um, I'm we'll see if he refuels. Which he might do it here and then go. He's wrong. refueling again. Yeah. Is he gonna try and get all the way? Well, he's taking a bit more fuel. Then is he gonna try and get it? from here to to do one more stop after this? I mean, it's possible. 40, He's, 35 mm, minutes, may, 40 minutes. Yeah, maybe this, maybe there'll be one more stop after this one, potentially. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be uh, we'll see close. what he does. Yeah, it will be. Up from Dodo. He's, he's checked out a little bit right now. Well, he's still yet to come in the pit as well as second position. and. This again, this is going to be one of those things where his caliber is going to be closing right up again. Especially now, because he'll be on fresh tyres, fresh thing. 215 zeros, though, saying that. Uh, Dodo's pace is outstanding right now. It's, it's, it's dropped ever so slightly. Now, maybe it'll be a second. So it's all going to be about how much longer he'll stay out, or does he want to protect it, or is he just thinking. I'm going to just keep to my original game plan and not worry about the car behind because he's technically not fighting me in this race currently in terms of outright victory. And that, that's kind of the mindset you've got to be in in these stints, Ethan, isn't it? you got to think yeah. long game, not what you can see around you physically. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's nice to know what everybody else is doing, where other people are. But it's just about doing the job that you need to do and not worrying about other people or what's going on. You just need the information when you need it and, like I said, do the job. And Dodo, his times, like you said, they've been going up increase. They've been increasing in time, but that's just because he's got the worn tyres. But, like, since lap 38, he's done nearly 10 laps. And it's just slight. It's, like, literally just either one or two temps per lap that he's losing. Like, it's... It's insane just how consistent he is. It's incredibly, incredible consistency. And that's why he's leading, and that's why I'm pretty sure his team is leading. I mean, well, you think good news. We have a battle on our hands. It's Groot and Kevin battling together. That is for 8th and ninth position. We can see them pretty close together into Brussels there in terms of their tyre performance. A bit more fuel, a bit more tyres, actually. So I'm wondering, actually, is uh, Kevin probably just got past uh group there as he starts to open the gap up i i think maybe we might have came that just a second late but uh hey you have seemed to have switched over in the meantime mike down a little bit further back after that earlier stop just a moment ago but he will now be going for one more stop whilst others are going to be doing maybe one maybe two if they're uh slightly uh over it leader should be coming in in the next two and a bit laps Two or three if they are going to try and stretch the fuel out a bit more. And this kind of the situation even where now you really want to try and stretch fuel a bit more and a bit more. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all dependent on what... I mean, you can do that. It seems some drivers now are seeming, seeming to want to spend less time in the pit, potentially. I mean, ultimately... Yeah, you know, time in the pit is where the most time is lost, and you want to maximise yeah your stints the best you can. You want to maximise the fuel efficiency the best you can. Yeah, you know, the tyres aren't too much of an issue. It's more the fuel, it seems. Yeah, and obviously some cars are going to be different. Some are going to be better. Some are going to be worse. But most, uh, to be fair, I mean all the drivers have done the stuff they need to do and. I don't think, I don't, th I don't think there's been enough vari that there hasn't been many variables for the strategy to be different or try something, you know, else. 
Yeah, most certainly indeed is uh, 2.14.8, the uh, last lap from Calibre. Let's see what this lap's going to be as he crosses the line. 91 thousandths slower, 2.14.6 there is it comes back over that one. So uh, taking time off, how much time is he taking? One second off per lap, as it would look like currently. So at this pace, Ethan, and he was only about, what, three, four seconds behind, and figuring he will need to do, what, presumably one, if he can get this strategy work, he might only need to do one more stop after this. It'll be awfully close, because he's, again, under fuel there. He yeah, might I come out and leave him... there. Well, the, on the lead on circuit, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting. It's tricky to say. I think possibly this last thing he does, well, no, no, the last pit stop he does, I think he might fuel full fuel, potentially. I'm not too sure. It's a bit hard to tell, really, because of how fast the fuel's going and how long... and how long it's going to be left. I think Calibre's got about maybe half an hour, well, maybe 20 to 30 minutes of driving left to do on this tank of fuel, which will leave him about... 40 minutes. to 50 minutes of driving, yeah. so maybe one stop, one more stop, I think, after this one. Well, in comes Dodo then, so let's see how many seconds it's going to be. Is uh, the mechanics ready and waiting? They're all warming up then here for what is going to be their penultimate stop, hopefully, of this afternoon's race. Uh, especially in this stint, might we say, of course, with one more after this waiting to go, which will be live on the channel of which is the uh, World Touring Racing Club GTS PS4 channel so uh, don't forget to go and check that back out later on of course link will be uh, provided on the discord twitter and uh, whatever else it is as well new set of tyres on and now the fuel comes in Randy Moore in the pit lane as well it's all just about waiting waiting where is Calibre and all this he's just coming around the last corner right now is crossing the line right now and it, it, it might just be behind by not much slow it's gonna be about a corner it is closer Ethan isn't it it's, it's maybe close. another lap or two and it would have been on it so he's a little bit unlucky but now again he'll have less fuel and the gap back under two seconds like it was at the beginning of the stint earlier on and it opens up it's kind of yo-yoing between the pair of them there as uh, Randy comes out the pit lane in third position. Splash uh, continues on in fourth. And Sonam in fifth position yet again. Of course, seems to be uh, the order between those guys as Donardi now comes in the pit lane for his scheduled stop as well. So Vincent repeat for Dodo. Yeah, he's got the fresh tyres. He's fully fueled and all he's got to do is, is just do what he was doing for the last stint just do the times he needs to does uh, needs to do he's on fresh tires fresher tires than caliber he might have you know like 55 liters more than all oh, calibers losing the rear end slightly on the entrance to pull on it's, it, i think caliber is going to struggle to close in on dodo unless there's a mistake yeah, most certainly is. I just go scrolling through the field to see uh, what's going on. We've got uh, Mountain King also in the pits as well. But like you said, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a Herculean effort to still try and close on. But you gotta remember, Caliber, he has got nothing to lose here, really. He's just going for it, going full throttle, and just see what happens because they are some laps down on the rest of the field. They are slightly now, I think. If I'm not mistaken, and someone will confirm it, I believe they are around a 6th or 7th overall currently. Like, in the official order of this race, they might be around there. Of course, someone will confirm that with us, potentially. If uh, Adam can uh, see about that, potentially, if he has got all the data. I think it's definitely tops. Maybe top six, maybe even top five, potentially. Six or seven, potentially. I think top five. It'll be 
interesting he's got to get Dodo, of course, Calibre. Of course, he is uh, that. Well, he is the car that we're talking about. Of course, with Randy, we've got Splash Sonam as well. It, it, it may be. It'll be. It'll be interesting to see. He might be. You know. It'll be certainly. I do like say by the way that Donati's uh, car. It's also a very lovely thing, the Jaguar. It's a little moustache on the front of it. So quite spiffy, might I say. It's also got that kind of helix pattern, might I say. It's like snake skin. All over the car. In essence, it's nice, isn't it? It's it's... A, a, another decal, definitely. That's probably been made, that has been made for it. You could bring in these patterns of decals that make the cars look amazing, and that's definitely a, definitely a pattern there. And it, look, it looks awesome. Just looking at the gap up front, it's up to two seconds, two point one. So yeah, it's rinse and repeat, and Dodo's off again. Off into the distance, not literally, oh. otherwise. <laughs> Calibre. Do you know what I said earlier on about that little AstroTurf? Even gone on it. Rear Ren stepped out. Let's have a little look at that if, we, if it lets me have a look. How much rear did that step out then? It looked like he got a, a wallop on it. It had to do some real opposite lock. Yeah, he. Ooh. Boy, how did he have to do it? Lucky thing that didn't switch around in that car, wasn't it? Watching it back, yeah. Oh, there's the. There was some understeer after clipping the apex there, and yeah, he's lucky there. That could have spat him in any direction possible, as the gap is just open and open and open up the front now. As Groot's in, in the yeah. Porsche, the WEC Forum's Porsche, well, Forum Fans Porsche. I, I've got to say, that pretty livery as well. That one covered in decals as well. As Mike, he might overtake the Porsche. Yeah, it's just coins are down again now. Everybody's spread out. Uh, we, uh, look at Splash. Meanwhile, he's currently in fourth position. And another car which he's having a very quiet day. Well, quiet stint, might we say, of course. He is 10 seconds behind Randy. He's, he's kind of just stayed around 10 seconds behind Randy. And about, he's definitely opened that gap from Sonam bit by bit by bit. Each current, each stint, maybe by a second or two. Second of three, now it's definitely dropped up as well since he's been under fueling a bit more. And it's another car, it's got a very, it's a simplistic but beautiful livery, of course. Uh, and it's those types of liveries which just really stand out. The white, the purple, of course, the black of AXR. It's difficult to say which uh, one stands out more between that and Calibre's livery. Um, it's difficult to say which is better even between the two AXR liveries. Have a look at the Mercedes. He's got a bit. The has got a bit more purple going. Yeah, it's, it's also one of. The, it's also got a lovely little uh, pattern with that as well, which I do know. Both cars as well. do have. Both cars yeah. do have the same pattern. I uh, know. I mean, it's a nice livery. I'm not. I'm not too keen on the. On it though. I mean, it's it's a great livery, but there are better liveries out there. Yeah, I, I, I must say, I, I do prefer the Corvette livery. It's always just Corvettes work quite well with all the shapes they've been given. Um, as meanwhile, talking of cars, you can see the uh, the gigantic BMW currently there going through shot just ahead there as I can, as I scroll through. I was about to try and say, oh, what has happened? What has happened to Simo? He's, that's down at, he's gone through turn one. He's got red damage, gone. Ethan. Now, yeah, just there, really. has he wow. spun it out of the last corner? Uh, surely he has to have, because otherwise it came in, right? Yeah, he has to have done. Or he's just, or he's done it somewhere else and he's just ignoring it and just carrying on. It's going to cost him speed in a straight line, though, and, corner, and some cornering ability. I mean, he's still plowed on, though, so we've got to give it to him. Yeah, up front still, yet again, 2.7 seconds. Now that time, 2.14.6 for the last lap, 2.14.8 for the last lap, and then it's 2.15 to a 2.14, so slightly slower, of course, and this just really shows the Corvette in this car, well, in these drivers' hands, definitely the man, well, the drivers to beat so far this afternoon in... The lead leading the race out right from our understanding. And it, it's just going well so far regarding any issues or disconnects later on. If that happens, that will really throw a spanner in their uh, 
without a bit of works, but um, so far, looking all good, especially with just over four hours now do remain of this race. We are now coming to the one hour marks with Dodo leading from Caliber in second and Randy in third. The, uh, the two Germans leading the Belgium and then of course the British driver of STM Splat ahead of the Greek driver of Sonam. It's good to see uh, some well, That's Greeks. just Lithuanian. Well, well, he says he's British on the thing, so he's Lithuanian, but yes. There's a Lithuanian flag on the uh, the winglets. On Maybe the, uh, Rob's Lithuanian. Who do, how do we know? Uh, oh, big <sighs> snap from big the BMW. Snap. Yeah. Gets well out of the way, and uh, nice past he goes as down into Pillon yet again for a novel lap. And you always just look around here in the Arden Forest, it is such a beautiful, picturesque little area. Of course, changed from its original layout back in the 30s, of course, the historic Spa Franco Challenge. So it hasn't been on many games. The only game that, in recent memory, that's not a mod is Project Cars 2. Uh, Project Cars 2 and AMS 2, I think. Yeah, I think it might be on AMS 2 as well, and I wouldn't be surprised on AMS 2 because they have literally every type of circuit in the world. They have about eight different versions of the uh, Silverstone. So uh, that says all about that. It'd be good if that was on uh, here one day, but of course, Gran Turismo, they do have occasionally have some historic circuits. The last historic circuit was, well, it would have been Brands Hatch, actually, on G6. And Monza. And Monza. And Monza as well, yeah. Before that, it had been uh, the old Fuji, back on GT4. Uh, if that was so, if you can think of any other historic circuits that Gran Turismo have used a lot of. I know the Mon as well, they have about, they had the 05 in the uh, slightly up, more up-to-date version. So, it's interesting as well, especially some circuits, but right now, I'm just looking through the field, and Dodo Gap is kind of balanced about 2.7. He's coming up to lap his teammate. I think that for the first time, is it not lapping his teammate? Uh, I think in the stint, yes. I don't know if they're already yeah, a lap down overall. Behind as he's going to get out of the way, presumably, on the exit of this corner. It'll pull to the inside of his, uh, to allow the uh, sister car through. Is he just going to hold the line here? No, he's not letting him through just yet. So the two, uh, Team Cars, a little bit of slide, and this is going to slightly hold up there, as you can see, let's through on the exit now, just about. And uh, that could have been a little more uh, smoother, but no ju no harm done, gap remains. In fact, it's opened up slightly to Calibre, if anything, as you can see, the rear brakes still coming on. Longer and longer now for that car. And you just wonder, Ethan, without that issue... Where could Mountain King have been in this race? Could he have been up to near that top five? Possibly. I mean, his, his, the way he was at the start, it looked like he was more than capable of uh, staying around the front, uh, around, around the top five. But it just hasn't come to fruition, unfortunately. Most in Teed Randy, meanwhile, he's in Third position, Splash, he has looked like he's slightly been closing in a little bit there. And this lap seems to have dropped back pace again. Of course, the Lithuanian driver uh, with the in-game English flag, uh, the British flag. So uh, I've never really understood why that's happened. because it's not available. Ah, well, there we are. I didn't know that. Uh, now we don't. Um, it's a uh, great we should maybe do that next game, make that... Uh, available. But, um, Donati, sixth position, ahead of Kevin and Mountain King, who is getting the blue flags now from the second place driver in this stint of Calibre. Groot so far down in ninth, ahead of Mike in tenth, and Simo down in eleventh. Ethan, you know, let's, I'll let you go through rundown of what has actually been going on so far in this race as well uh so in the last well i'll go back from when we first started so it was the two corvettes that were 
given it all in the team play that allowed this man, Dodo, to take the lead and stay there for the last two hours. Calibert, he's been trying to make up the time that was lost when he disconnected so suddenly from Stim 1, but it hasn't come to fruition. The pace hasn't been there. The car just isn't set to the way he likes it to be set up. And he's been soldiering on as best as he can. Randy Moore, he's been quite quiet, to be fair. I mean, he's doing his own thing. He was giving it a, a, giving it a good battle with Calibre at the start. And after the pit stops, he's been doing his own thing. Keeping the pace and driving his own race. And then Splash had an almighty battle with Sonam. That battle then ended with the pit stops in and have been kept apart from each other. Donardi's been doing his own thing for the entire race so far. There's nothing much to report there other than he's been going really consistent. Kevin, he's been noted by the stewards a few times, I believe. He's been watched for his antics, but he's been playing some masterful moves as well. Some moves that were over the limit, apparently, according to some. Some moves with... That, well, with some moves that were absolutely amazing. And he's currently in the pits now. Groot, again, another quiet day for that car in the WC Porsche. Just doing their own race at the moment. Mike as well, battling with Mountain King, who is currently suffering from what appears to be some sort of brake issue. The Corvette and the BMW battled titanically during the second half of this stint. And then Simo has been... Limping around plowing with that damage. Up, plowing along with the damage at the back of the end of the field, six minutes and thirty seconds down. But all in all, we've had we've had some battles, we've had some phenomenal moments. We got Mountain King getting out of the way for Calibre there. With fifty five minutes remaining as Simo is coming to a halt on the racing line towards He's trying to get out of the way. That's not very a wise thing to do because there's the beam. Yeah, that's not exactly the smartest thing there. Best thing is just keep on going as fast as you can and just let them buy on the straight. Don't do it in one of the most dangerous corners in the world. Indeed, let's ride on board then with Mike and a uh, how scary would this have looked then from the onboard. As you come up the hill, all of a sudden there's just a car right in the middle. Oh, and he had to get right out of it there in that. That's like could have been all over right there. And he's a very Mike's a very lucky thing that he didn't then tag or slightly go wide there. Let's get on board with Simmer as well and have a look at that from Simmer's perspective. I wonder how close that actually looks. So that's the Corvette through. That's the other car through brakes, that's probably the last figure. All of a sudden, you're going to see a BMW rocket up past and... Oh, I mean, to... I, get, I get what he's trying to do, but that that was ridiculous. That I mean, it's, you're on the... He's doing 70... What was that? You're in miles per hour. He's doing like 70, 80 miles an hour where you're doing... Well, I, I'm in KPH. You're usually doing over 240 KPH through there. It's, I get he's trying to do the right thing to get out of the way, but he was in the way there in a the most precarious position and if that was real life he would have been at, he would have been getting a, a right talent off from race control there he'd probably get a talent off as well for that because that was ridiculous yeah, 150 miles an hour you go up there just about uh actually over on board with dodo right now who is a uh, all nice clean up front as he rides past the uh the i was about to say the grandstand but the um the bank on the left of course where the old circuit used to be it used to go straight down there and then of course you would take the little kink there and you can see where the old runoff is and you'll see where the road used to go we'll dive left here as we dive right down towards the back of the circuit where you join of course was the exit of stavolo 2 give or take it's really i'd never really it's quite difficult to see exactly where it did rejoin it's kind of in between the area actually isn't it Ethan? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it might be even further around it. It might be like a little bit past behind the gravel trap of Stavolo 2. So, as far as seeing it, so many iterations, back, hasn't is. it? You can see looking back it's... there, you can see where it is actually. So, it's kind of like, it is pretty much on the exit of Stavolo 2. It's a little bit further around, but like you said, yeah, this track's had a lot of alterations, hasn't it? Yeah, obviously, um, you, know, you know, obviously, Rouge and Radion, you know, 
in recent years has been causing, as much as it's a spectacle of a corner, has been causing a lot of issues, not just in open wheel racing, but also in G any racing that goes there, there has been trouble there. Obviously, most recently, W Series, Abby Eaton, you know, she got, you know, had a massive accident there at the top of there, breaking her back, or breaking some of her vertebrae, and then the absolutely awful accident in GT World Challenge, the 12, 24 hours of Spa, Horror. The, the videos are out there, but it's an absolutely horrific video of uh, Emil Frey Lamborghini just being clattered by four GT cars, and all that's left is just a monocoque, and the engine is like off into a marshal's post somewhere. So, Spa has spent about what is it, 80 million euro renovating this circuit, not only for safety but also for a bike racing license. Yeah to allow bikes to go racing here. I'm not sure if that's going to last long, personally. But as we go down to a Rouge, this obviously is going to be tightened up. There's going to be a gravel trap. The barriers are going to be moved back. And the poor house that sits atop there that you can see full of guests no longer stands there anymore. It's been stripped. We had a circuit being given much needed alterations to try and make it a bit safer, but... With the way technology is going and the way cars improve and these modifications made to a Rouge and Radion where it's been tightened up, I think maybe even F1 cars of this year will be going flat through there. I think eventually even GT cars, LMP cars will be going flat through there as well. Yeah, it's going to be one of those things, of course, and we we, we do already see Radion, it, especially it, it, each year now, especially in the last couple of three, four, five years and since, of course. The tragic passing of Antoine Hubert in 2018. It's been, uh, sorry, 2019, is it not, actually? Yeah, 2019. Apologies there, but um, it's, it's one of those corners where you see a car go up there and you just kind of worry that something's always going to happen there. You always see it each year, and in fact, you've always kind of seen it, especially since the early 2000s of cars going off there, and it's, it's a scary area of the circuit. We've seen plenty of accidents, of course, and especially in recent years as well. We, I remember seeing an LMP2, was an LMP2 car that took off up there, even if uh, I'm not was, mistaken. No, it was an LMP1 privateer car. It was a, it was a s and racing. It went wide, got, went over the runoff on the inside, and it literally took off, did a backflip. And, yeah, I mean, Spa's an, an amazing circuit, but that corner... I mean, it's even had a chicane in it to try and stop the issues. Yeah, you know, it's... I mean, like we said, you know, some drivers and some people, some fans like the dangerous circuits. Some people, you know, like, I mean, Spa is a dangerous circuit, but even with these modifications, I still think eventually we'll get some sort of issue there. But enough about circuit modifications. Caliber is in, I believe, oh, 49 Maybe. minutes to go. Full fuel. To go. If he wants to go for one more time without pitting again, he's going to have to full fuel. And I believe. then do a tiny bit of fuel saving potentially later on. But uh, he should be fine. Everyone else, they will be able to go to the end of this race. So let's see. Splash will be uh, coming in in the next 10 minutes, we believe, as well as full fueling we look to. Let's check out it. what's going on. That seemed fast. No, nope. 75%. So, can he make that? Maybe he can make that last. So, we'll see. It's going to be interesting. He's come out behind some traffic. That's THG Mike and the THG BMW. That will be coming in soon. So, maybe uh, Caliber won't have to worry too much about that car. Yeah, well, of course, we'll presume, we'll get an answer probably from Liam if uh, XR Liam, who uh, normally is watching, if he can make that. He'll let us know in a due course. Uh, it'll be close. It might be close, but uh, it, it could be doable. I mean, looking at it, meanwhile, up front, Dodo, he just, he's just checked out really right now, hasn't he? He's not really, so far, it's fingers it's crossed, it's pet a uh, wrong thing. Nicholas will be stopping again. That is the confirmation from Liam. So, one more stop for him. Probably two yeah, tyres, I imagine, won't be able to do. Long as you can do on a stint is about 37, 38 minutes. So, Splash 
he, he sh maybe might be able to uh, get it in. Maybe. And especially the, uh, the rest of these guys, Dodo, Randy, they will be able to do one more stint. And you got to wonder, that's, that's cost, is that cost Calibre more time than it has? I don't know, maybe, maybe with full fuel he could go the full 47 minutes and just fuel safe, but obviously they're not, it. they don't have the liberty, well they do have the liberty to do it, it's whether they want to or not, and obviously they don't want to, because they want to gain the time back that they lost from the disconnect. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see, I'm looking through this, I, I'm not sure if that's, it might even itself out in the end, but these guys are going to have to do one more stop. Callum is going to have to do one more stop as well, so he's going to have to come at these guys very quickly to come back through these guys. Let's see, as you can see, the BMW diving in. Uh, yeah, BMW, yes. So let's see if the BMW goes fuel, fuel. See the uh, the gigantic BMW, might we say. And then it comes, just waiting for it. And like I said, the, the BMW, the CM6. The M6, of course. It's been a uh, new, the new BMWs actually come out, and that's uh, should be yeah, racing. That's already, yeah, that's already racing and out and about. And, uh, it did quite well at the Dubai 24 hours. It didn't win, but it's it did well. It was in the top five. Was it Lamborghini that won, if I'm not mistaken, Ethan? No, was it, it was uh, Audi. Was it the Audi? So they, then they always the seem to win there. Well, Audi are very good at what they do. Yes, indeed, they are very good at what they do, of course. And uh, so far, is there any Audis in this field, actually? Nope, there was one last uh, last time they did it, and the team that ran it didn't like it very much. I personally think the Audi and the Honda NSX, two very good cars around this circuit, are incredibly viable options. Obviously, they, they lack in the straight line uh, speed, but they make it all back up in the corners. So with the right setup and right commitment, maybe an MR car is the right way to go, but obviously not very popular this time round. And they're expecting to see splashing at the end of next lap, if I'm not mistaken. So again, he is potentially going to be having to do one more stint as well. And this is going to be a little bit interesting as well between these guys. Now... I'm wondering, especially as we uh, look at the THG Mercedes there of uh, Sonam, it is kind of, well, it is American esque livery, might we say, on the car, which is definitely well, it's actually exactly what it's based on. Yeah, oh, there we go. A little bit of um, paint bleed on the uh, as you run on board of the bonnet, but um, it's a little bit of uh, could be fixed pretty easily. And uh, back to uh, outboard as a uh, splash. Well, I was asking it was going to come in next lap potentially. Well, he's decided this lap might be the opportunity then with 44 minutes on the clock, exactly as I believe as he enters the actual pit box nearly. There's the app. Yeah, he's on his way. Any second now, it'll it appear. Takes an awful long time. There he, is. there he is. At least it's not like the. Uh... The, the pit lane in ACC where it's the entirety of the Grand Prix pit lane and then the GT pit lane that goes all the way down to Arouge. It takes like about 90 seconds to get through it. Indeed. That's just to go through the pit lane. That's not even including a pit stop. It's awfully long. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that's because they do that, don't they? Because they have, of course, more cars and they yeah. need both of them. But uh, it's always a fascinating thing to watch out as well, because the old pit lane, it, it is, you don't realise it, it's a lot steeper than it looks down that hill. Oh, it definitely is. I mean, like, it looks tame from a camera angle's perspective, but when you actually go on board with a car, it is steep. As you ride through the field, and actually, we'll have a ride with Donati, and uh, let's go see if we get the uh, floor cam, if we can, if it gives me the option to do it. Where's the floor cam button? No, it's not going to give it to me. Never mind. No floor cam so far, then. It did give it to me earlier on, but it's not going to give it now. And you can see just how much, especially looking back, it just drops and drops and drops. And you really realise it. As the source is almost not far off the site, the height of the uh, of El Rouge. In no, essence. I mean, I mean, obviously, the lowest point of the circuit is. Who on? I'm pretty sure. 
Nah, stop pill one. Found the bots, found you in Stavolo. Maybe Stavolo. Yeah. Stavolo one, I believe. And obviously the source, it's a little, it is, source, yeah, I mean, the, the undulation here is just magnificent. I mean, it's not quite Nürburgring or Portal mm. out, but it is, it is a, a wonderful circuit. And we're just watching, obviously, well, I'm watching Denardi. We've moved on to the Aston Martin of Randy Moore. I've just seen on stream and you've seen it. Damage. And not just a little bit. Big damage, and this is now well and truly a spanner in the works here for the GTSV Aston Martin. Yeah, well, I'm wondering where he's done. That'll be the. I'm presuming that would be the exit of Stavolo 2, dropping it on there on the curb. And we've we got a car stop somewhere on circuit, going slowly down the back. Not that I can see of. Kevin, Kevin, also in the pit lane with damage. Now, oh, have we had a coming together? Have we had a coming together somewhere or not? Whilst we were looking through that, it's difficult to tell, and of course, not gonna be able well, to get. It is, it is impossible to tell because we haven't seen, have we? And we can't get a replay of it, unfortunately, due to uh, the nature of where we are. So. A issue there, and that is going to promote Sonam and Splash up into second and f well, third and fourth, fourth on the, road, on the yeah. road. Minding the fact that we know that these cars are all well, we know that Splash is going to come really, in. This could be really crucial. I mean, this could be the difference between these two cars ahead of Randy will finish on the podium or not, potentially. I mean, this is. I mean, if the damage was done at Stavlo 2, he hasn't had long to go, but it is a rare mistake there. And what that has allowed is now your race lead up 46 seconds up the road from second and third. Remember, well, of course, second, who is still yet to stop. Dodo will not be stopping again after this stop. Of course, 39 minutes, which is the indicator of how long you can go. And uh, yeah, Randy has to stop again as well. So that so that is uh, the word. Barring an incident for Calibre, they will be starting up the order one more spot. This could get quite interesting, this, Ethan, as well. This is going to benefit the THG Mercedes and the AXR Corvette so much if this. Oh, and now the Aston Martin's being held up by by the. Jaguar as well now. Oh dear. I think he was, I don't know. I'll we'll call back late anyway, but if the Aston Martin has to come in again and it's behind the other cars, he, this is, yeah, this is not good. Let me have a look at it. He was uh, just trying to get rid of penalty. That's why he slowed up so dramatically. Luckily, of course, no harm done right there. Dodo still leads this race. 40 minutes just under to go. And might you say, Ethan, it, it's been a long afternoon right now as you've still got three hours to go. <laughs> so just seeing their... Uh... Well, they got six hours still. Well, more than less than that now, but yeah. Yeah. You should but... have... Uh, well, we were, uh, st yeah. we were over the halfway mark, so, yeah, we're so not three long, hours not after long. this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah one more step. Pretty sure one more step now. Yeah. So, I mean, this is where it gets interesting now. Who's going to push it? Who's going to coax it to the line? Not just in this stint, but in the next stint as well. You know, this is where it's all to play for now. And I've got to say, maybe the GTSV Aston, I mean, making a mistake that late with not a lot of time left to make up for it could be the difference between finishing second first or even on the podium altogether. So. AXR have a good opportunity here to get this their Corvette on the podium here, and so do THG. They have a good opportunity to close off the podiums away from the GTSV Aston Martin. I, that could be the most crucial mistake of the night, that. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm riding on board here with uh, Mountain King. This is getting horrific. With the, You can see riding on board. You can see... Oh, hello. 
Look at the ABS even coming on. Look how much it's coming on now occasionally. You can see it blipping. Look at it. That is... That's not good. That is really not good. Now... The, the fact that he's been able to go this long with that is actually quite amazing. Because I would have had enough at this point and just threw my pedals out the window. But thankfully I don't have G29 pedals if that's what he's using. Although I do want to make an upgrade eventually. I want to make a whole upgrade. whole sim upgrade, you know. Try and get some better equipment. I mean, the Frostmaster T300 is good wheel, but it's better out there. Yeah. Obviously, Fan Attack now with the 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 CSL DD Pro, quite expensive, but it's quite it's very good apparently. So, if you've got a couple hundred quid lying around and you want to get a Fan Attack wheel that's designed specifically for Gran Turismo 7, look no further than the Fan Attack CSL DD Pro and cop yourself a good wheel there. But apparently Frostmaster are coming out with their own direct drive wheel to combat that as well, apparently, so... Yeah, it's, it, it's going to be interesting with wheels. I don't know much about wheels. I, I, I'm a controller dweller half the time. I do have a wheel. I, I actually... I own your wheel. Uh, yeah, my old one. Mike's in with damage again. Oh, oh it... Mike's in with damage. It, it seems like we're getting to this stage even where the drivers, are they just coming to the uh, point? It could, yeah, it's entirely possible. I mean, I remember doing the Nürburgring 24 hours that AXR hosted, and I did the night stint from, oh, it was like four hours from, when was it? Oh, it was well, it was like, I think I finished at like five or six in the morning, so I was doing it from like one o'clock in the morning till five. And trying to stay awake when you're by yourself at the Nürburgring is really difficult. Especially when you're in a quiet car like the M6, so there's not much going on to like wake you up. And I remember going off and clipping the barrier, and then I had to do the longest stint I had ever done. Like, take it, like, try and drag the car to the end without doing another pit stop, and it was awful. It's doing night, doing night driving on a game, it, it is quite difficult because it's obviously you're not. In real life, you're going to be kept awake by you know, the rattling of the car over the curbs, you know, the gear. Yeah, there's so much more to keep you awake in a real car during the night rather than on game. So, and like we said, you know, there's time zones that are influencing this. Some drivers are going to be well ahead of what we're where we're at now. They're going to be well into the night, and they might be getting a little bit tired and a little bit complacent. Indeed, Randy, starting to close up to the number. The uh, the Corvette number it's number 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 eleven uh, of SDM Splash so far. So see a potential battle going on there in the near future as the number sixty eight so closes up as well. So those two closing. All drivers needing one more stop to go in this uh, stint here at Spa with just over thirty four minutes to go. As uh, Liam responding with that about that issue, he'd uh, he'd rather um, do other things than have to put up with uh, that for a whole stint. I I'd agree, and I think even you'd agree as well. Having an issue uh, like that, perseverance. Yeah, it's 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 annoying. It is very annoying, is that? Uh, Mike's got damage again. Uh, what is no, he ha hasn't. Rep I don't think I don't think he repaired it. Did he not? Or is it the other? Or is it the other side? Yeah, it was the other side. He had left front damage. Hang on. I, I'm gonna go check the uh, stream. Has he got damage again, or is it? Is he not repaired? That see if he comes in. He's coming in again. Now, well, if he didn't fix it, then that's been a a small error, and I, I you have to feel for Mike right now. Of course, they are. No, he hasn't repaired it. He hasn't repaired it, unless he has dropped it. Somewhere else we've missed it. And, um, and he comes to fix that yet again. I can't even see his car this time around. I don't know where his car is. Apparently it's stopped, but I can't actually see it, so I don't know what's going on there. Well, in comes Dodo, meanwhile. And gets new uh, tyres, new fuel. This will, uh, I think, maybe, may probably not allow uh, Caliber an opportunity to lead this race for uh, the brief moment. No, it doesn't. Uh, Dodo, Dodo's pace has been... Actually, you know what? No, it will. Oh, no, it, it will. will. Oh, wow. Now this will be interesting. I mean, Calibre, oh, he's still got probably about another 10 minutes of driving to do yet. 
I doubt he'll hold up any How? fight here. I don't. Well, maybe he might want to. This will pro prevent progress, but it does prevent Calibre getting uh, making time as well. But I mean, it, this could. See, this is the thing. If he battles with this Corvette, this could be the diff. You know, this might trigger events later on in the race, or later on into the next stint. So this is going to be very interesting to see here. And so, see. Sonam's in as well. Yep, Sonam's in for his stint. Blue flags flying for uh, that would be be Mike, Mike. isn't that? Yep, stop the yeah, road there Mike. in the other well in the sole bmw right now of course and uh talking of the bmw just reminds me of the old z4 so oh, hello press the replay camera accidentally i didn't mean to do that uh as the uh z4 once upon a time that was a a car that we used to be running in different series but uh that really just faded out it's a lovely car the z4 it's um it's very it's super actually isn't it yep <laughs> Uh, so it's still running, just just it's got a different body kit on it as a uh, caliber struggling away on those tyres. They're just starting to get a little bit worn right now. As uh, you now got to start thinking with 31 minutes to go, they will need to stop once more as they get out of the way of the BMW. He's flashing his lights to let the cars through or right on the outside of the corner, and both of these cars get past with relative ease, which is good to see. As in the pit lane. Still is another car. Who's that in the pit? So is that Donardi in the pit? It is Donardi in the pit so yeah. far for his stop. Gets the fuel in there. It should be a full tank of fuel. I don't think he needed to do that. No, I don't think he did either. But maybe he's just doing it just to be safe, perhaps. Should be around about half an hour. It should be a, just over half a tank of fuel. Ish. Possibly, but he is in a Jag. I'm just waiting for this gap between Calibre and Dodo to come down into the slipstream and see what happens. I'm very eager to see how it all pans out. There's the Porsche of Groot is in. WEC Forum's car is in. That's going to be for its last stop as well. Yep, most certainly. Gap now 1.1 seconds between first and second. And closing all the time as uh, Calibre. I'm oh, sorry, Dodo. Three temps up on his fastest lap, not getting a slipstream from that distance, though, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, no. So, so it's just your pace. Yeah, within seven and a half temps. I've got to say that Randy is, despite his accident, he, you know, he has responded by setting another purple lap time, so that's good to see. I have a feeling, though, Dodo could easily surpass that, but. His progress is going to be halted slightly. It'll be halted slightly, but uh, the question is how much is the slightness? How many laps will it take if, of course, they do battle? And that's the question if they do battle. How much time will be lost? What happens? And even if can Calibre put up much of a fight on old tyres like that? Because as, as we've uh, said, Ethan, with the tyres, how much fresher... And how much more pace a new set is compared to a slightly worn set is half a second to a second, even more a lap, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, these, I mean, his calibers tyres aren't that old. I mean, like I say, that they're nearly 10 laps old. But they're, they're going to start dropping off soon. The transition point will be coming along. I mean, maybe even Cal uh, Caliber might come in early earlier than he needs, wants to, just to get out of the way of that Corvette. But maybe he's not going to. You see slide out the corner there and the Corvette is so very nearly in the slip now it is just two temps off the slip now yeah indeed I was just going through and seeing uh, third and fourth so far and how they're doing whilst we are uh, give a little look at this guy these guys for second and uh, first position so far in this race who are both been driving the top four of uh, everyone's been driving a phenomenal job so far just and to be driving for what was now their sixth hour nearly of driving uh, coming up to it their total for these drivers they had to finish their uh, both their stints and a, a nice long break for the likes of splash and caliber uh the likes of everyone else as well all of the drivers now getting a nice relaxed and 
So, well, Calibut, I suppose, in some essence, he's actually, well, he has driven the less of all of them, because, uh... Well, yeah, he disconnected. <laughs> Didn't he? Yeah, oh, he that did. Corvette is so close now. So, so, so close. Just about. He's a tenth off. He'll be at a tenth now. Uh, uh, Calibut's put, got a good exit out of Vic's corner. Using all of the track there, you can see the Mercedes doing a little bit better through pro on, but here we go now. The Corvette is getting closer and closer. It's especially on the brakes even as well. When with the tyres, you can get so much later on the brakes it seems. Yeah, definitely. If you got fresher tyres, you're able to brake so much later. Oh, it's just nearly, just nearly there. He's going to be in the toe now though. He's now in the toe. The Corvette is now inside the toe. Now, what is Calibre going to do? Well, he'll, he'll be fine down here. It'll be up El Rouge and Radion. I, I don't think there's a lot, really, you can do in all context. We have 26 minutes still to go in this stint here. Stint 3 or 4. Don't forget, of course, the uh, next stint will be live. And all the links posted on the Facebooks and Twitters of the... Uh, account which of course was the one streaming just a little while ago as well and uh, as we say stint for lobby is actually open uh, right now as well All right, here we go what's gonna happen now is caliber gonna fight this I don't think he will personally oh look at the wow I think Dodo left that late he left it. He left it late to make a move. He got he got tucked up right behind the Mercedes there, didn't he? No. And is it done? I think Caliber wants to fight it, but no, Dodo placed his car perfectly there. He wants to fight. He couldn't fight. Twenty five minutes now remain. Gap up front from a splash thirty seconds. You can see these two. Just about holding on, but I, I'll expect, presumably in the next lap now, probably, that we'll see Calibre dive in the pit, get a new set of tyres on, a new set of, well, a little bit more fuel on as well. And then we'll be going to the end of this race for the next 10-odd laps here in Spa. As the sun setting, of course, and stint four, it should be, I think it should be uh, pretty much the dark setting, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should be pretty dark. Unfortunately, no night settings on this circuit. Only Nürburgring and Bathurst seem to have and uh, night, Tokyo. Uh, night stints and Tokyo. My bad. His calibre, he's not dropped off the back of this Corvette entirely, but once he's been passed, the, the time is yeah, it's starting to bleed away quite a bit now. Will he just tag along onto the back of the Corvette for a couple more laps, or will he dive in now? I, I mean, I, he's probably going to do what I first said, and that is just tag along. Well, let's see it. Well, he's closing back up, to be fair, actually. That's a slip for you. Yeah, it's strong. The Mercedes, quick at a straight line. Brakes just about holding on there as well. As a uh, rear end of the he, Corvette. It looks like he wants to go for a move. Switching around. Well, let's see if he goes for a move. Or is he just going to push the uh, car along for a little bit? Just save some fuel. I mean, it's always possible to save some fuel whilst in the uh, slipstream. You can turn the fuel mix slightly down. Because uh, the tow will... Uh, Kind of counteract it ever so slightly, as you can see, a little bit of smoke getting kicked up and dust from the curb as well. But on the exit, you can see the Corvette just that little bit better. And up El Rouge, up Rally on we go. And I see. think there could be a move again here. I don't think Calibre will be content with sitting here. Let's see, is he going to go and pull a move to the inside? The no, answer is, no he's not, he is just going to go and push along, he's going to save some fuel as well. He knows really probably that he, he can try and fight it, but he has still got to stop, so he'd rather not throw it up the inside, get damaged, and then end up having to come back and make his teammate's job a little bit harder later on, because these guys are doing phenomenally right now. Splash meanwhile, he'll be on, on this lap. Randy will also be in on this lap, so it's going to be interesting. THG, meanwhile, he could be kind of in the middle of these guys, you know. Sonam. Well, Sonam. Yeah, Potentially, he... he could end up in there, yeah. 
I mean, he's what? Caliber's going to go around for another lap, though, I'm pretty sure. 28 seconds behind the car. I mean, it's what? It's a 30 second pit stop, isn't there? 30, 40 seconds. I'm not, I'm not so sure. I'm not too sure, really, on how long it is a pit, a pit stop here. Randy, yep, yeah, you're right, he's going to have to, I mean, that pit stop with the engine damage has royally messed him up, let's be honest there, so he's out of sync now with the rest of the field. Caliber will do one more lap, Splash won't, he's going to be coming in. Uh, unless Caliber decides to, I'm pretty sure he has enough fuel to do one more lap. He might just have one more a lap of fuel then, but... He's coming up to lap traffic. He's going to carry on for one more lap just to give the car as much fuel as it needs just to run it down. He's keeping with the uh, car ahead. Splash will be in this lap. Talk about the gap itself. It hasn't really dropped to uh, Randy much. And that's pretty uh, impressive for uh, Randy currently. Uh, and well, Splash. He's, he's, he's light. Randy's light in the circuit of light with purple sectors he's up at the moment on his current time so we'll see if he decides well if he, it's possible for him to go even faster splash in one liter yep. of fuel literally left i mean well this is the moment for randy to try and put the pedal to the metal and try and gain some time back and he lost i oh, just slightly lost some time out of the bus stop there but if he can provide another lap, lap like that he might just be able to fight splash for the uh, well, for a third spot. That's so nab. He's coming up to the bus stop. Let's see Where how... is Splash? Splash is in his box now. The jacks go up. He'll come out ahead. Splash is going to have to fight this one back, I think. Unless he's going to get an awfully quick stop here. He'll half feel it. Yeah, so has got this. He'll come through turn he's one. He's ahead. Out comes yep, Splash. Splash is only... Yeah, he's only just left now. That's a lot of fuel. Maybe, it is a lot well, of fuel. like I said, maybe that that's how much the Corvette needs to get to the end. But yeah, I mean, that is six and a half seconds. It's going up even more as it starts evening out. You're looking at about what six point eight to seven, seven seconds. You'll have to what gain a second every like two and a bit laps. I mean, it's possible. Depends on how much pace, because we saw earlier the gap opened quite uh, a lot up. It was about seventeen, eighteen seconds, a bit more than that. Oh, about oh Randy Moore! Whoa, how has he saved that? He nearly just did a Giovinazzi in pool one, and I literally just switched to him, and his car was 90 degrees across the circuit, and it let's scared have, me. Let's have a with replay of, of it with the amount of tire screening going on there. Jeez, gets rear on the curb. Oh, <laughs> he's a lucky one there, and that is that corner, pool one. It, it's frightening let's have a look at that from the uh let's have a lot of a look at the replay from the outboard cam if it lets us Oof, here he is. comes <laughs> bit of uh was... size squealing a, a new pair of trousers and a pit stop i imagine immediately for some new tires as of caliber in the pits as well yeah, in Randy's comes randy in as, as well, well. So where's Splash going to be with this then, I wonder? Be, well... I mean, if Andy would have lost a lot of time from that little mistake there at Puan. I mean, that's so very nearly could have twitched the other way and he would have been... Well, there was plenty of runoff there, at least this time. If it was the real circuit, there would be gravel there waiting for him. Yeah, there would have been nowadays. I'm bothered with Splash. Let's see where he comes out. Calibre, I think, is already out on circuit. So, uh, he's happy. Sonam is coming through... Randy's just got to his stop right now. He's going to drop down yet another position in this race. Splash will be ahead as well by quite a comfortable margin as well. So oh, that that end, that pit stop with the damage and then just that little moment there. Oh, it's not a big gap, actually, looking at it. What's the gap? It's be about 1.2. It's going up. Three. I'd say maybe maximum of four seconds three seconds it'll be by the time they even out the top of our rouge normally it'll be up to speed right about now that yeah, three seconds so the gap up front to to sonam three point well six point two seconds so 
This could be really close towards the end. Third, fourth, and fifth. They're all going to have to work at it. As you can see, Splasler setting the purple times alight in Sector 1, of course. We know how quick that Corvette has been this afternoon. So now, you'll be on definitely wearing tyres. They're not that worn, though. I'd say what? They're about... Yeah, they're not, uh, well, they're not worn at the moment, though. Uh, give it ten minutes. And Calibur in second position. Comfortably then, unless he does a mistake. Should be starting... Uh, I'm not quite sure where they'll be starting in the next in. And, um, I'm sure Liam will let us know where exactly it's likely I'll be starting in the next stint with uh, all things. And uh, so now I'm in third, splash in fourth. Randy, oh, Randy he's closing. Catching. He is catching and quick. Well, he will catch, but he doesn't want to push it too heavily. He's probably running now, probably. You reckon he's got to have a bit of anger in that car now because Maybe. he's made those mistakes? Possibly, yes. There could be some... He could be at... Well, he's probably not at a boiling point, but he's probably a little bit miffed with some of the mistakes, but he's making up for it with sheer pace. But, I mean, like I said, this is crucial. You know, this, these mistakes that have happened in this thing could influence the podium of this race. And Splash will oh. know that. AXR will know that. And GTSV will know that. And he's got 15 minutes to close three seconds. Well, yeah, but look, he just made another mistake, Ethan, there on the exit of uh, the last corner. He got too much on the throttle and lit the rear tyres up. The Aston Martin not looking. 100% planted there. And what? Well, we don't talk about him. We haven't talked about him a lot right now. I mean, we have actually, but we haven't seen him for a minute. Dodo. What's he doing up front? He is 40 seconds up the road. He's just coming to lap that. Is that the BMW up the road? Or is that nope, the uh, Jag? It's a Jag. Jag off, excuse me, Dan Denardi. Denardi, so he's lapped everyone up to now, I believe, sixth position in this uh, this afternoon stint. So, well, this evening stint now, I should say, as we are rallying to the evening here in the UK and around the rest of the places in the world, and especially in Europe. Dodo, the German, of course, it is now, what have been, a, an hour ahead, so they're about 8 o'clock. For past um, that. Yeah, we, well, it's over 8 o'clock, it's 8.07, currently in German time, Central European time. Caliber, second position, so now, gap now 5.3, it's closed up over a second in the last lap. The cap behind, meanwhile, Staying is feathering around 2.6. It's coming down a lot now, though. Yeah, it'll come down, but it's all about as long as you don't Ooh, make mistakes. Splash, splash. Is wide. Yeah. Oh, I see. Look at that. There's Randy. Randy is purple in sector two, so he is gunning it now. Oh, just, can he catch up enough? It's gonna be. It's, we've got two kind of things going on here. It's can splash cat Sonam. And pass. Can Randy cat splash and pass? And then it's all, it's all going to meet up. Because look, you can see there up the road. That is the Mercedes there of uh, THG Sonam in third position. So far, you can just see behind. You'll be able to see the, uh, the outline of that car. As you head down into turn number one. Second and third. Closing up all the time. Splash made a little mistake out of the source there again, just too eager on the throttle. He is gaining time though, and Randy, he didn't go purple, but he was very close to doing it. 2.14.2, last lap from Splash, 2.14.6, last lap from Sonam, 2.15.4. So it's, it's going to be very close, I reckon, to the end potentially. Yeah, it's all going to be coming down to the last 13 minutes. I would not go anywhere then. Purple Sector 1 then for Splash. He's starting to light those times up as well. And he's done it so far pretty much every time he's got around there, of course. Because, like we said, very quick car that thing is. And just be able to hold up. Just be able to close up as well. And we're going to have a finish, Ethan, of either Sonam, Splash or Randy. Or it'll be 
one of those three. You never know. Anything can still happen. He's a little bit wide there. From Randy in the background, 2.4 seconds now, that gap. That could be a penalty, that. That could very well be a penalty. As Splash in turn, uh, didn't get the card to turn in there for Puom. He's lost a little bit more time there. Oh, this is tantalizing, this. How... What? We've got three drivers all on... Comp well, two drivers on the same strategy. And then you've got poor Sonam trying to make it to the end. 12 minutes to go. The gap between Sonam and Splash is not coming down as fast as what I thought it would be. But the gap between Splash and Randy is now below two seconds. Yeah, Sonam's definitely starting to struggle right now. I think he might have still made a mistake in that lap because he's coming up. We're getting some lap traffic, I believe, coming up the road. I'm wondering who that is. We've got... That's Mountain there uh, to start the road. I think that's just Mountain on his own, actually, that. Yeah, he's by himself. So the gap, 1.8 seconds. Now, between those two, it's getting close up. 14.1 from 5th position there of Randy, 14.9 from Splash, 15.6 from Sonam. Gap is just under 4 seconds now between these two. It's just under 2 seconds between Randy and Splash. This could go either one way, even, but we are running, running out of time bit by bit. Yeah, and the Corvette is dragging away from the acid in a straight line, so it is going to be a struggle. Obviously, Randy's got faster stuff, but he's going to need to do more than that to catch up. Yeah, it, like we said, it's, it's all going to be about who's going to... It's going to be about last laps or two, isn't it? It's going to be down to that. It's going to be down to how quick Splash catches Sonam, because if he catches him quickly, it's going to bring Randy more into this. And Randy... It's going to be, he's, oh, he's going to be, be so good. This is going to get, potentially, a grandstand finish here between these three drivers. So Nam, who, uh, in terms of this, he's he's been having a quiet race. It, it might not be quiet for a much longer because behind him, he is getting caught. It's not a nice feeling either, knowing you're on a slow tyre being caught. There's not a lot you can do about it. You just have to accept you're being caught. And the best thing you can do is not make not to make a mistake and when the faster cars do arrive just try your best to inconvenience them but not inconvenience yourself if you possibly can and he's doing well he's still in the 15s splash is not doing enough to catch him he needs to be lapping the same as randy board to catch in time and randy might catch splash before splash catches sonam here because the gap is 1.3 now between Splash and Randy. It's going to be one of those things. D does Randy want to try and battle Splash so heavily if Splash gets a little bit on the curb? Or d I'd say, do they want to kind of work together a little bit to try and catch Snowman and then try and get past and then battle to get more positions? That's kind of the thinking y you might have to start with eight minutes to go, but... Are they going to cancel that in time? I mean, it's now just coming wow. under three seconds. Well, the question is, is is Splash looking behind him or ahead of him? That is, that is yeah. a good point. <laughs> is he going to start looking behind him more than he starts looking ahead? I mean, he's in a really precarious position here. He's so close to third on track, but he's got a mad Aston, you know, all rolled up, chasing after him. And he's going purple nearly every lap now. Oh, this is... Let's see now, Splash is now lapping a second a lap faster than the Mercedes now, but Randy's going even faster. This... It, whoa, mate. This could be really good. Yeah, this this is going to be down to the last thing. As a... Uh... Uh. Adam hopes uh, the Corvette and the Aston battle so hard that you know, the Mercedes is not pressured whatsoever. I think every team member would want, well, every THG driver would want that, wouldn't they? Uh, well, I hope I hope they all catch up and we have a good free car fight because this, you know, these moments here can influence the podium, and that's what we gotta love about endurance racing. Little moments like this, like after three hours of driving. 
second, third, and fourth is separated by 3.2 seconds. It's got it. And, and now slipstream. The in the core in the slip of the Corvette now. Oh, what's Splash going to do now? Is he going to look, is he going to focus on just behind or is he going to try? Maybe he lets Randy go and uses Randy to get to the back of the Mercedes. Let's I would do that. See, he'll pull to the inside. And he breaks late. Oh, they touch on the exit. He's, oh, he went for it. Oh. Wow, that was a good move, but I think Splash cost him a lot of time there. I think Splash can be wise about this and use Randy to catch up to the Mercedes. Yeah, of course, when you're following a car, the pace can definitely increase, can't it, Ethan, as well? Oh, well, and then Randy's made an absolute mess of the final uh, source. What's the gap between the Mercedes? See, the gap to Mercedes 3.2 again. And all that hard work undone yet again. But They're going to battle for fourth now. That's going to allow this. Adam and THG might get their wish here. Yeah, Splash cast. is not. He's not content with sitting behind an Aston Martin to catch up. He wants to be ahead of the Aston Martin. And now comes the bit of. Oh, but he's getting all out of shape. And this is turning now in between these two in the gap up front. THG might just be going. Oh. I'm, I'm relieved right now because what we've got three laps to go give or take oh, and that's oh. that makes a mistake this they're finishing on the road ahead of these two cars I mean what Sonam's tires like I mean they're 215 sevens these guys 216 that last lap 214 for uh, them they are holding each other up ever so slightly as this is so close. Look, they're literally bumper to bumper, and he's going on the inside into Fania. This is gonna this is gonna work, they'll oh. touch. Splash is not content on giving this up at all, is he? Uh, the move's done now, though. And he'll have to Wait. hold it. He'll be brave to try and hunt around the outside into the next corner. He'll have to back off. He does. But now is Splash gonna try and follow back and get as much of a toe, as much pace as they oh, can. Oh now lap traffic as well. Yeah. So it's cut off, there's lap traffic now. This is Mountain King ahead. And this is Splash is working together now. Yeah. This is what they should have done from the start. Instead of fighting at the bus stop this last lap, last lap they should have just let him go, let Randy get ahead, bump draft him towards the Mercedes. Four minutes to go, we're creating to what? Two and a, just over two laps, maybe. Three. Possibly. Oh, this going to be weird. Ooh. They're gonna need to. What was the last lap for the Mercedes? Two sixteen, two two fifteen. So yeah, they're gonna need to be on pace. Oh, oh but and another Randy mistake. again! Make getting on the throttle too early. And now he has, <laughs> he has the pace. It's gonna be close. It's two seconds. It's coming down more and more. We have just got over two laps to go, and yeah, pushing. They're pushing now. They're working together. This Corvette needs to get out of the way as quickly as possible. Just not just for the our sake of the commentary, but also this will influence the race if he does not get out of the way as quick as possible. And he is it is by the rules to get out of the way, and he's not doing that. Uh, he's not gonna be able to get out of the way. I hear he'll have to. He'll pull to the inside now. now. Gets out of the way. He couldn't do it through that corner. It'd been incredibly difficult. 1.5 seconds. It's come down nearly a second in the last lap. This is gonna be close, Ethan. It's all about this last thing. 1.2. It's coming down. Oh. THG Sonam, he's working so hard, he's pushing the car, the tyres are going off low. Look at them, oh, the tyres are look gone. Look at the time, it's just evaporating. Get Where's Splash and all this? He's outside the toe now. Yeah, Splash is outside the toe, but he might still have an opportunity of getting that position, because look, he's now in the toe. Randy's in the toe already, that's how quick he's caught him. Those tyres have gone off even completely. And Who's now, up ahead? there's the Jaguar Simo also in front of this battle. Yeah, indeed. Oh, they, it should just get caught probably in the middle of the lap. I think it, Randy might get past this a little bit earlier. 
We'll have two laps to go here in Spa. Here in Stint 2. Dodo leads this race. And yeah, these guys will all have one more lap after this. Splashes in the toe of the Aston Martin again. And he's nicely, he's in a decent gap here. To, so if Sonam and Randy have a mistake, he's not too, he's far enough behind that he's not going to get affected by it, hopefully. How is this Jag going to influence this battle, though? He'll have to pull to the inside up our roads, of course. Well, not out, outside of our roads, up the uh, Camel Straight, because here comes the Aston Martin. And he's, which way is he going to go? He'll see all of a sudden the outside line. It'll oh, be he left close. it too late. They left it too late. They'll come up to the car ahead. They'll go side by side down towards... The con has he got enough to break round the outside? Thinks of it, but laid the Aston Martin, the, the Mercedes later on the brakes, still holding on just about, and he's going to have to defend this like crazy right now for the next couple of minutes. Oh, it's, Randy just left the move too late. He was too busy debating on which side he was going to go, and there was no time to move because he, there was a Mercedes literally right in front of him. Not a move on the inside here. It's not going to work. You're just going to have to pressure him into a mistake here. Where's Splash and all of this? He's five tenths off. Oh, my. This is going to be close. He's going to oh, cover a mistake him. there from Sonam. It, this might not still work. It might still work. He'll have to hold it. And you can see the rear end squiggling around. He's trying to go one way. He's trying to go another. Look behind. You can see the car as well. He's... Just, he can't do anything there. He's just hesitant there. But the Mercedes losing the rear and losing oh. more. And they tarped on the exit. And now Splash is probably looking at this going, I might be able to... Oh, he's oh. off. Oh, he's almost dropped it. And this has gone a bit close now. And he's having a look on the inside. But now he's going to try and go around the outside on board. It's not going to work. On board with Splash around the outside. He can't quite do it. And then so close, he's going to have to cover, and Splash is going to have to be careful here. Oh, where is the where is the Aston Martin going to go? Where is Splash going to go when this all kicks off? One lap to go, then. This is the final lap of this race for the race leader. Second, third, fourth, fifth, I think. The rest of them behind, they will finish now. So that will be the end of their respective races. I believe I think one or two might have just got around just in time to get one more lap. But yeah, the Aston the Martin, it's all going to be now or never. Yeah, it's now or never for the Aston Martin. He'll have to come out early. He go. does oh, do he's so. Hit the back of him again. Sorry to cut over you. And now Splash is going to come out. This is going to be free wide. He, surely, Ethan, surely. It's going to be free wide. Is he going to have a look up the inside? He's hit him again, though. He's he tapped him again, and now Splash on the outside. Can he do it? Surely what not on two. What a move. They're still going oh, at it. So oh, my lord. And oh. they still fight. And now can Splash get the inside? What a battle this is for the final podium position. I don't know what Randy was doing. He just kept driving into the back of the Mercedes. Oh, it's a... Race leader Dodo is finished. I'm sorry, mate. We're just so enthralled by this. Where is Splash going to go? He needs to be careful. If he's going to make the move, he needs to make it stick. Because if he doesn't do it, Randy's going to pick up the pieces. Randy's just looking. THG's on edge. Everyone's on edge. We're on edge. Half a lap to go. The battle for third, fourth, fifth position. Fighting all the way down. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Sonam? Is it going to be Splash? Is it going to be Randy? Randy's having a look to the inside. They get into contact. It's going to put him wide. On oh, front of the... That might have just been done it. That might oh, have just done it. Oh, it's aggressive. Oh, that's it now. And pushing wide. Oh, he's going to draw. XR won't be happy with that. Flashing the light. He's not happy. I'm not expecting that. That was a little bit over. That's cost the podium. And he'll get through again then, I think. Is he giving oh, the he drop? Let, he let him go. He let him go. Probably realising it, but Sonam somehow, somehow has got to Gonna be third position there. Fourth for Splash. Fifth for Randy, who's probably apologising. Dan Hardy's in a set, mountain cross line in seventh. Groot in eighth. Kevin ninth. Mike in tenth. Simo eleventh. My, my, what a battle. 
Uh, it's just Randy. He just uh, as hard as he tries, he just left the moves too late and kept driving into the back of the THG Mercedes. And then when it came to the last moments, desperation, I think, slightly took over there. But he realised his his error and gave the position back, which was very good to see. But my, my, what a race there. Three hours of ra ra uh, racing, all just, and the podium positions that may be influencing the final podium positions and the overall result, all just came down to the final lap there in the final corner. Indeed, that was incredible. Well, I've, got, I've just got to say, I think both me and Liam, I think we both can agree here. I think we're incredibly grateful for being given the opportunity to commentate for this event thank you very much to thg tom and the guys at wtrc for giving us the opportunity to commentate for this event i thoroughly enjoyed it. it's the first time i've commentated on an endurance event rather than just driving them i gotta say well that, that was a blast that i haven't done that for a while commentating on endurance races it, that ended spectacularly that was a battle and a half and what you can say about that one is classic. That Indeed. was a classic. And, and they do it all again. Well, the other drivers do it all again for another three hours. But I think we have to call it there because obviously this lobby is about to end. Uh, but we'll let you round out, Liam. Indeed. If you're wondering where Stint 4 will be, it will be back on the uh, channel it was earlier on today. It should be appearing live uh, in just a few few moments time if not it might already be live right now so uh do not forget to go and head over to the world tour racing uh channel as well as it should be live in a minute but i have been evil ethan has been ethan and until next time take care and goodbye from us in stint number three